Good afternoon. Welcome to the formal meeting of the Phoenix City Council for February 17, 2021. I will call the meeting to order. Will the clerk please call the roll? Councilman DeCicio. Councilmember Garcia. Councilman DeCicio. This is Sal. Yes. Thank you, Councilman. Thank you. Councilmember Garcia. You Councilwoman Guardado. Councilman Nowakowski. Here. Councilwoman Pastor. Here. Thank you. Councilwoman Stark. Here. Councilman Waring. Here. Can Thank you. you. Vice Mayor Williams. Here. Mayor Gallego. Here. Thank you all and welcome to today's meeting. Mario Barajas is with us to provide interpretation services. Mario, would you please introduce yourself? and I'll be serving as today's Spanish interpreter. I'll now take this time to introduce myself to our Spanish speaking uh, Spanish speakers. Muy buenas tardes, mi nombre es Mario Barajas y yo les voy a estar sirviendo como el intérprete del español del día de hoy. Muchísimas gracias. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Mario, for your service. Would the city clerk please read the 24 hour paragraph? The titles of the following ordinance and resolution numbers on the agenda were available to the public at least 24 hours prior to this council meeting and therefore may be read by title or agenda item only. Ordinances number G6808 through 6811, S47290, 47292 through 47330, and resolutions 21894 through 21897. Thank you so much. We do have a large number of members of our public who are interested in participating in today's council meeting. Uh, like our previous council meeting, we will likely take a break during the council meeting to um, allow our staff and everyone uh, a, a moment. Um, Vice Mayor, do we have a motion on boards and commissions? I move that we approve the mayor and city council boards and commission nominations. Second. Any comments? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed, please signal nay. Passes unanimously. Can I now turn to our city attorney to uh, introduce public comment on agendized items during the council meeting? Thank you, Mayor. Members of the public may speak for up to two minutes to comment on agenda items to be discussed. Comments must be related to the agenda item and the action being considered by the council. General comments that go beyond the scope of the agenda item must be made during the citizen comment session at the end of the agenda. Speakers must present their comments in a respectful and courteous manner. Profane language and personal attacks on the members of the public, council members, or staff are not allowed. A person who violates these rules can lose their opportunity to continue to speak. Thank you. Vice Mayor, do we have a motion on liquor license applications? I move to approve items 2 through 13, except 8, 11, and 12. Voting items 3 and 13 are requested to be continued to March 3rd, 2021. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any comments? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Nay. Passes unanimously. We next go to item eight, which is in Councilman Guardado's district. We do have the applicant here to address the council. So we'll begin with that comment and then turn to Councilwoman Guardado for comments and a motion. Uh, Sarkadon, the floor is yours. Hello. Hello. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Yeah, my name is Pekarun um, Jonathan. I, for one reason, I cannot um, um, turn the cam on. Uh, we are audio only. Awesome. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. So, so we, I, um, um, we, um, when I applied for my liquor license, um, we had um, opposition in our application, but yesterday we had to get um, a good neighbor agreement with the um, association 
we are entered to agreement that we um, will um, work up together to have no any oppositions in the applications. That was the only update on the on the on the on the applications like we submitted. Wonderful. Thank you so much for working with the neighbors and your councilwoman. I will turn to her now. Thank you, Mayor. Um, yes, I wanted to thank Stephen, the applicant, for his willingness to sit down with neighbors to create a safer intersection working on things like lighting and increased security measures. I also wanted to thank the neighborhood groups that brought forward concerns and worked in good faith with the owner to collaborate and find solutions. Leaders from the Lane Avenue Block Watch, Ocotillo Glen Block Watch, North Glen Neighborhood Association, and the Alta Vista Block Watch all participated in this successful effort. Again, I want to say thank you to Stephen from Westside Smoke Shop for setting an example for good business in our district. It is my hope that as you work with our community and neighborhood groups, your business will continue to have a success. And with that, Mayor, I would like to make a motion to approve item eight. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any comments? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed, nay? Passes unanimously. We next move to item 11, which is Lucky Market in Council District 2. Uh, we do have a uh, representative from the applicant here as well as our staff. So I will first go to the applicant and then our staff. Jared Rapinski, the floor is yours. Can you, can you hear me? We can. Okay. Uh, well, good afternoon, Mayor, uh, members of the council. My name is Jared Rapinski. I'm the agent for Lucky Market, and I'm hoping the goal of council today is a comprehensive understanding through all of the most relevant information with regards to Lucky Market and owner Gita Black. That uh, meeting, a qualified opinion standing alone seems incomplete if not supported by statute, historical precedent, and reasonable comparisons. So first, let's start with the uh, uh, public convenience and best interest of the community. This is historically presumed through the issuance of the interim permit, meaning the location has already qualified for this type of license. And since there's been no public process protest, it, it appears the community welcomes the approval of this liquor license. Now, secondly, as to cable qualified and reliable, uh, uh, which is found in ARS 4203, as mentioned in PD's report, but it's also found in 4202 and 4210. And the reason why this is significant is the title of 4202 is qualifications of the licensee. And this statute says in sum, no felonies in five years, no liquor license revocations in one year, everything properly filed on DLC forms, et cetera. Therefore, Mrs. Bat is qualified under 4202. Additionally, Mrs. Bat has never been cited under ARS 4210A2, which says in sum, licensee fails to satisfactorily maintain capability qualifications, reliability requirements of an applicant. It seems reasonable if Mrs. Bat truly was not capable, qualified, and reliable due to a history of violations, then she would have at least been cited under 4210A2. Next, there's no question that Jerry's liquor uh, uh, has proven to be challenging for Mrs. Bat, but she paid her fines and learned from the experience, making her a better owner. She also paid $750 per incident, and the maximum administrative fine per law violated in Title IV is $3,000. If these violations were so severe as to disqualify Mrs. Bat, it seems reasonable the fines, uh, um, the fines would have re uh, basically reflected that. Um, lastly, Mrs. Bat owned and operated U Stop convenience store for five years and Sun Double Liquor for five years without any violations or issues. In order for council to get a complete understanding of Mrs. Bat's capability, qualifications, and reliability as a liquor licensee, we should look at all of the business she has owned and operated, not just the one with violations. In sum, we're not trying to minimize. Uh, the violations at Jerry's Liquor, but those incidents have made Mrs. Bat a better owner. She requires all of her employees to be trained under Title IV. There are scanners and utilized at both stores. There is educational signage posted throughout the stores, and there's state-of-the-art surveillance as well. Uh, she also conducts regular meetings with her employees, emphasizing the many aspects of Title IV. And it is for those reasons I've mentioned today that demonstrate Mrs. Bat is capable, qualified, and reliable. Uh, thank you for your time, and I'd be happy to answer any questions if you do have. Thank you. I will next go to our staff for a presentation or brief comments. 
Thank you, Mayor. Can you hear me okay? We can. Thank you. Good afternoon, Mayor and Council Members. I'm Jennifer Wingenroth, the City Clerk. Item 11 is a request for an ownership transfer of a liquor license for a liquor store. This location was previously licensed for liquor sales and may currently operate with an interim permit. Staff recommends disapproval of this application based on a police department recommendation for disapproval. And Mayor, Members of Council, Detective David Hurt from the police department is also available to speak. Uh, yes, good afternoon, Mayor and members of Council. I am Detective David Hurt with the Phoenix Police Department. I serve as the abatement detective and the liquor liaison for the Black Mountain Precinct in North Phoenix. It's my duty to review, investigate, and make recommendations to liquor applications within the Black Mountain Precinct. I had the opportunity, and I'm here today in reference to the pending Series 9 liquor license uh, by Mrs. Gita Bat, Shiv 1 LLC, and Lucky's Market. My original recommendation for denial was based off the serious violations of her previous or still current uh, liquor mart in the town of Tempe, known as Jerry's uh, Jerry's Market, Jerry's Drive-In Liquor. Excuse me. There was four serious violations that uh, went to my recommendation. Uh, in doing so, uh, I did have a, a phone conversation with Mr. Rapinski, the consultant, the consulting agent for Ms. Bat and uh, set up a meeting to discuss uh, these issues. On February 10th at 1.30 p.m., I agreed to meet Mr. Rapinski and Mrs. Bat at the Lucky's Market. Uh, during that time, we were inside of the market. Um, Mr. Rapinski was uh, going over the things that Mrs. Bat had done at Lucky's Market to try to ensure that serious violations did not occur uh, at this market. While there, um, inside of the store and reviewing the information that Mr. Rapinski was going over, uh, two gentlemen entered the liquor mart, approached the uh, beer storage area. Each of the gentlemen uh, grabbed individual beers and then approached the counter area. As they approached the counter area, the cashier counter area, um, they were less than 10 feet away from myself, Mr. Rapinski, and Mrs. Bat, who were obviously in plain view of these two gentlemen. There was a, one of the young uh, gentlemen appeared to be younger, and he handed his uh, beer, 24 ounce beer, to the other gentleman who walked up to the cashier's counter to purchase the two beers. Being that the younger looking individual had done this, I asked Mr. Rapinski and Ms. Bat if they wanted to check the individual's identification. The younger male had walked towards the doors, the entrance doors of the liquor mart when Mrs. Bat and the, I believe the cashier, began asking uh, the younger gentleman for identification. The younger gentleman was a, Span a Spanish speaker, did not understand what was going on. I asked the individual in Spanish if he had any identification on him, to which he said he did not. I then asked him in Spanish uh, for his date of birth, which he provided, and then I followed up with a question of uh, how old he was to ensure that the date of birth was correct. The date of birth and the age the individual provided did not match. At that time, Ms. Bat, in the presence of Mr. Rapinski, as well as the cashier, uh, told the individual that he would not be able to uh, buy the beer without, a, uh, without his passport. Um, this was while in the presence of the liquor store, while we were trying to, Ms. Bat and Mr. Rapinski were trying to relate to me how serious violations from the previous uh, market were not going to occur. And that concluded my interview with Mrs. Bat that day. Um, for these reasons, uh, applicant Bat has shown through the previous violations as well as the incident on, on February 10th, a lack of uh, institutional control over the liquor establishments. And therefore the Phoenix Police Department is uh, recommending disapproval of this application. Thank you, Detective. And, and thank you to Jenny. Vice Mayor, do we have a motion? I am moving to recommend disapproval based on the police department's recommendation. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any questions or comments? Roll call. DeCicio. Yeah. Garcia. Yes. Guardado. Yes. Nowakowski. Yes. Pastor. I 
apologize, Pastor. Stark? Yes. Waring? Yes. Williams? Yes. Hello? Hello, Pastor? Yeah. Yes, it's a yes. Sorry. Thank you. I'm sorry. I shouldn't have done that. Uh, <laughs> Waring? <laughs> Thank you, Councilwoman. Gallego? Yes. Passes 9 0. Our next item is agenda, uh, agenda item number 12, Tennessee Grill in Council District 1. Uh, we do have the applicant available to speak, as well as a representative. The applicant will go first to Philip and then Craig. Hello, council members. Thank you for taking the time to listen to me speak today. I just want to kind of tell you how I got here. Uh, I was working for a company, Shamrock Foods. Uh, COVID, I was um, a consultant for the restaurants. I've been doing that for the last 13 or so years. Uh, I love it, but unfortunately when COVID hit, I had to strategize and come up with something different. And I thought switching over to a business owner and taking over a restaurant, I, I think I thought I was ready for it. And over the last four months, it's been the best decision I've made this far. Uh, I just wanna say that I'm disappointed in the detective's report. Um, other than that, I wanna thank the city of Phoenix. You guys have been wonderful on everything. And I just feel like I was kind of uh, either biased decision or misrepresented. Um, but moving forward, I'm here and I'm ready. And I've poured my money, my own hard earned money into trying to transition ownership. Uh, I saved jobs. The previous owner was in a, a dispute with a landlord and I was able to broker a deal, saving 20 jobs and keeping a family owned restaurant in the area. It's been there for eight years now. And I just wanna thank the community of Anthem for stepping up through this time and really being supportive. And I'm happy to report that although my liquor sales are only 15% um, and there definitely needs to be some room for improvement on that and from a business standpoint, um, we're never gonna be a series six. We never want to be. And uh, we're a family owned business. We're a family restaurant and that's how we're staying. Um, in reference to the construction process and moving the dining area over to the bar area and vice versa, that's simply just to open up more seating because of COVID. And it's kind of a no brainer. We need to get some outdoor seating and that's our only option. So um, it's not a desperate attempt to try to add more bar seats. Um, just really just to try to evolve with the times and uh, grow this brand. So. Thank you. We will go to Craig followed by our staff. Thank you and, and good afternoon, Mayor and Council. My name is Craig Miller and I work with the Arizona Liquor Industry Consultants. And we had the opportunity to work with um, Philip Latticer uh, with this location. The Tennessee Grill located at 4220 West Summit Walk Court. Um, it's a fast casual restaurant. I went up to that location um, to visit the site. And I'll tell you, it has a substantial commercial grade kitchen, which seeing that is Alcohol sales percentages are about 15% now. It makes sense with as nice a kitchen they have. They do a, a great casual uh, dining. And I could see why moving, when you first walk into the entry, you see the bar area. And that's a big enough area that they can move and get some tables you know, moved around, have more seating for COVID, like he explained. I, I wanna commend him for actually jumping into a business during COVID times with everything um, going on and working through those those issues. You know, he, as when he worked for Shamrock Foods for 13 years, he consulted with res, with uh, restaurants on food costs, pouring costs, um, equipment costs, consulting with businesses. And, and I read the report, um, you know, saying that he, he doesn't have any experience running businesses, but he consulted for 12 years on successful bars and restaurants and, and keeping their food costs down and meeting the percentages of 
sells to, to qualify and be a series 12 restaurant. The, the, with the increase of COVID traffic, the area to do is to build a, an additional patio. Once he got in there and realized he needed to work room around, there was a, a construction permit issued there. There's no exterior. When asked what his plans were, he's talking about the big picture, what he has planned in, in the future. Obviously, he doesn't have money to knock down a wall and add a patio yet. And before he does that, he's going to make sure the use permits in line and the permitting process is all in line. This is what he's done is cosmetic in, in creating more room for dining areas for people to consume food, you know, which is obvious with this 15% alcohol sales. I'm available for any questions that any uh, anybody has in, in reference to this location or Mr. Lassiter and be happy to uh, answer any of those. I want to thank you so much. I will turn to our staff. Good afternoon, Mayor and Council Members. Again, I'm Jennifer Wingenroth with City Clerk. Hi. Item 12 is a request for a new liquor license for a restaurant. This location was previously licensed for liquor sales and may currently operate with an interim permit. Staff recommends disapproval of this application based on a police department recommendation for disapproval. And Mayor and Council Members, Detective David Hurt from the Police Department is available to speak. Again, good afternoon, Mayor and Members of Council. Again, I'm Detective David Hurt with the Phoenix Police Department. I'm the abatement liquor liaison for the Black Mountain Precinct in North Phoenix. I'm here today on the Series 12 liquor license application by Mr. Philip Latticer and the Tennessee Bar and Grill. Uh, the Phoenix Police Department recommends disapproval for this application for the following reasons. Um, during my investigation and review of the app applicants for the city license, as well as his state questionnaire, there was many discrepancies between the two. I met with Mr. Lasseter at his business location in Anthem on November 24th. During that time, my interview consisted of Mr. Lasseter walking me through the business and telling me about his plans on what he was doing with the business. His initial plan was to move the smaller area, which consists of the bar, over to the larger area of the business to have more space for bar area. Um, he walked me to that larger, larger area and then walked me to the back where he had already started construction in the kitchen area where he was talking about putting beer coolers and de designing the bar and, and moving walls and that sort of stuff. Uh, he specifically marked no on the city application to question 21, which specific, specifically asked if there would be construction at this location. Mr. Laster continued talking about his envision for moving the wall. He also talked about having an emergency fire line as well as water line outside the building moved so that he can expand the bar further to an outside seating area. There's already an existing small patio area at this location where, where diners uh, can sit. It's right in front of the doors. One question about turning the place into a bar, because that's the feeling I got at the time, was that he was changing the dynamics dram dram dramatically. Uh, he said, I could see how you see it like that. And then he talked about not wanting to be like other bars in the, in the Anthem area. I then questioned him about his living, his location about being there. On his application, he said he had another job. He was a salesman for Shamrock. But then he also did not list any managers uh, at this location. And he marked uh, on question number 12 that he would be running the business, that he would physically be at the location running the, 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 the liquor license and, and the business. Uh, so then I questioned him because the home address on the questionnaire was quite a distance away from the business. I asked him about that, to which he then admitted that he doesn't actually live at that location anymore. He lives right down the road from there, uh, which struck me as this application that he put this residential address on was filled out just a couple weeks prior to him uh, uh, submitting it. Um, so there was a discrepancy there. Um, during my conversation about his other job and being on the premise as he didn't list a manager, he told me that he could only be there two days a week because he had his other job at, at the Shamrock as a salesman. Um, he stated that he had two managers. None of them were listed in either application or questionnaire. And then he even admitted that he didn't know who they were yet, who were who those managers were going to be as of yet. Um, when talking about financing and the money on what he paid for 
the business, um, Mr. Latticer explained that the $25,000 he had already paid was back rent, uh, security deposits, and so forth, um, and that he still owed the previous owner $100,000 that he would pay out of proceeds from the business. And then when questioned about the remodel, where the funding was coming from the remodel, because that was not stated in the anywhere in the application process, he stated that he would save money from his other job and then and, and that would pay for the, the remodel. After my interview with Mr. Latticer at the location, I had a follow up conversation with him on the phone on, no, on November 30th. Um, Mr. Latticer said he didn't have a pen uh, when I was talking about things that uh, that I had issue with. So he said he would call me right back after he found a pen. I waited and I waited almost over two and a, two hours later, he returned a call. Um, and the conversation was more so that Mr. Latticer was upset with his consulting group that, uh, about these issues and that it wasn't his fault. Uh, he again reiterated that he would be paying for the remodel out of his last week's or next week's uh, paycheck from his other job. Excuse me one second. In closing, based on the information, Mr. Latticer is not proven to be reliable, capable, and qualified to hold a liquor license. His lack of candor and truthfulness throughout this entire process to include two different applications, one with the city and one with the state, um, goes directly to his capability and reliability. While his actual lack of experience, although he is works for a distribution company, that is not actual experience in running a bar that serves alcohol and, or any type of liquor. Um, he has no personal experience, which he admitted. He's a salesman for the last 12 years, is what he told me, for Shamrock, and that he knows people in the, in the industry, but he, he admitted that he has no experience. That goes to his qualifications to operate the business. For these reasons, the police department still recommends disapproval of this application. Thank you, Detective. Vice Mayor, do we have a motion? Well, I move disapproval based on the police department's recommendation. Second. Any comments? Roll call. Decisio. Yes. Garcia. Yes. Guardado. Yes. Nowakowski. Yes. Castor. I apologize, Pastor. Yes. Yes. Thank you. Stark. Yes. Waring. Yes. Williams. Yes. Gallego. Yes. Passes 9 0. Thank you. City Clerk, are we ready for ordinances, resolutions, new business planning, and zoning? Yes, Mayor. Vice Mayor, do we have a motion? We do. I move to approve items 14 through 81, except the following items 14, 15, 28. 36, 64, 79, and 80. Noting that item 26 has been withdrawn. Item 65 is requested to be continued to March 3rd, and 78 is as revised. And excluding these items for public comment 20, 27, and 81. I will second. Thank you. We have a motion and a second. Roll call. Decisio. Yes. Garcia. Yes. Guardado. Yes. Nowakowski. Yes. Pastor. Yes. Stark. Yes. Waring. Yes. Williams. Yes. Gallego. Yes. Passes 9-0. Thank you. There were a lot of extremely important items in that motion. In particular, congratulations to Councilwoman Stark on the items related to redevelopment of Paradise Valley Mall. I know you have been working very hard on those. And very happy. Thank you. 
Uh, we next move to the payment ordinance. Uh, if the vice mayor is okay, I will take items 14 and 15 together. Uh, move approval. Second. We have a motion and a second. Roll call. Decisio. No. Garcia. Yes. Guardado. Yes. Nowakowski. Yes. Pastor. Yes. Stark. Yes. Waring. I apologize. No. Waring. No. Did you hear me? No. Yes. Thank you. Oh. Williams. Yes. Gallego. Yes. Passes seven to two. Item 20 is a uh, personal injury claim, Foster v versus City of Phoenix. Do we have a motion? Move approval. Second. Second. Any comments? Roll call. Decisio. Is there someone here to speak on this? Um, yeah, it was pulled here on that. Consent. It, it was pulled from consent because someone wished to speak, but that person did not sign in. Okay, thank you. Sorry. <laughs> yes. Thank you. Garcia? Yes. Guardado? Yes. Nowakowski? Yes. Castor? Yes. Stark? Yes. Waring? Yes. Williams? Yes. Gallego. Yes. Passes 9-0. We next move to item 27, a very exciting uh, series of good news for the city of Phoenix, our consolidated annual actual action plan, uh, which will allocate CARES Act related funding. Uh, Councilwoman Pastor has been working, the entire council has been working very hard on this one, but, but Councilwoman Pastor has a motion. Yes. Um, as you know, the CARES Act funding has provided Phoenix resources to address the needs related to the current COVID-19 health crisis. This funding is a one-time allocation to support the vulnerable in our community. In May 2020, the City of Council approved the first allocation of funding to support homelessness services to veterans, women and families, and older adults. In addition to helping small businesses, nonprofits, profits and housing rehabilitation of owner occupied residents in low and moderate income areas. I commend my colleagues on the council for prior prioritizing COVID relief to ensuring not only the safety of individuals in our community, but also for being diligent in ensuring funding helps the city further its goal to addressing homelessness overall. I reviewed the proposal in this item against the homeless plan approved by the council in October 2020 and recognize that many of the proposed allocations can be directly tied back to the elements of the plan which include mental health, workforce development, shelters, encampment cleanups, neighborhood strategies, and outreach and resources. Therefore, I support the plan with the following motion. To approve the substantial amendment of 2015 to 2020 consolidated plans, 2019 to 2020 annual action plan to include a second emergency solution grant and community development block grant allocations, and to amend the first round of the community development block grant authorized by the Coronavirus Aid, Relief, and Economic Security Act. Public Law 116-136 enacted March 27, 2020 with the following changes. To increase the allocation to support the Human Services Campus to 4 million with the following distributions. 2.4 million going to CAST to support the downtown location. 1.6 million through a new contract with the Human Services Campus to support the needs of all HSC partners in providing critical service needs. I further request that staff work with HSC to identify how the money will be used and provide a timeline for the use of this one-time funding prior to the release of funds. Reduced by, a reduced by 1 million for a total of 14 million 
the allocation to support the funding of facility acquisitions and or improvement. I further want to ensure the RFP clearly delineates that this is one-time funding allocation with the preference given to a regional approach to purchase a shelter facility to organizations that identify sustain, uh, sustainable resources to maintain ongoing maintenance and operations. With no changes to the allocation presented by staff or the RFP to support homeless services. I do request that the RFP requires respondents to outline their proposed plan um, ties back to the city council approved homeless plan approved in October 2020. Finally, I'm requesting to dedicate 200,000 200, from an administrative cost to further efforts in identifying regional resources and working with MAG to urgently advance a regional plan to address homelessness under the direction of the city manager. There it is. Second. Thank you. So we have a motion from Councilwoman Pastor and a second from Councilmember Garcia. I think a great motion that advances regional solutions and collaborations. Uh, I hope that it will set a great precedent. Cities, Maricopa County, the state has these tools as well. They can go to a wide variety of things to fight poverty, and the City of Phoenix is sending a strong message today that among many priorities, we have placed homelessness at the very top. So thank you, Councilwoman Pastor, for that motion. Do any council members have comments? We do have four members of the public to address us. Mayor, just very briefly, um, I, I just wanted to say I, I'm very thankful we're going to be doing some RFPs to fund facility acquisition and or improvements of up to four shelters. I have been working in Sunny Slope with uh, businesses, residents, and caregivers looking at some type of shelter. We affectionately call it a healing um, center. And so I am very, very enthusiastically going to support this motion. Thank you. Thank you, Councilman Stark. Um, and this, this motion is because of a great partnership with the federal government that did recognize that cities and our residents are going through very difficult times now. So I want to acknowledge their leadership in this area. It is allowing us to fund incredibly important projects in our community, including a partnership with US Vets, which will provide appropriate housing for those who served our country, as well as Project Haven. Um, it provides direct funding to Central Arizona Shelter Services and a separate direct funding to the Human Services Campus going to be some great news here, including new facilities that hopefully re reflect the fact that this need occurs throughout our community. If you look at eviction lab and other resources, we are seeing challenges throughout Maricopa County, and hopefully we will see solutions throughout Maricopa County. Um, any council member comments before we go to Mayor Thompson Nowakowski? Please, Councilman. Well, first of all, Mayor, I want to thank you and all the staff members that worked on our homeless plan, it's all coming together. And I really want to thank all those individuals and especially the um, neighborhoods around the campus, um, basically doing a lot of research and making sure that um, we were doing the right thing and looking at other providers throughout the city and asking the city to really look at um, smaller um, shelters that are specialized in either veterans, seniors, and all different um, areas. So I just really want to thank the community and basically a lot of hard work and coming together. And it's really the power of the people coming together, making sure things happen. So once again, Mayor, I think we need to continue to challenge our neighborhood cities to do the right thing and use us as a example of how to fund homeless programs. And it can be on a regional level too. So I just really want to thank your leadership and thank all those individuals, Laura, and, and all the others that have worked very hard to make this possible. Thank you. Thank you. And, and I think one thing the city council has said unanimously is that we all believe this is incredibly important. So thank you for your work on this and, and making sure this is truly a regional solution where we have answers in all parts of our community. Um, not hearing any other council members wishing to speak at this moment, we will um, go to 
comments beginning with Rich Eaton, followed by Amy Schwabenlander. Hello, Ms. Mayor. Thank you. And thank you, Council, for having me. Uh, I would like to first commend you all for uh, stepping up and dealing with this homelessness. Uh, uh, probably better than most cities around you and probably in the West. Uh, why I'd like to speak is I am in full support of everything that you've talked about, but I am also part of an ownership group of a 280 plus hotel in North Phoenix that we would like to take a hard look at becoming a shelter, becoming a housing transition, uh, becoming part of the solution to the obvious problems that we have. So uh, you all have my information. I believe uh, when I signed up, I will also be reaching out to the local providers to let them know uh, my group would love to be part of this and transition our hotel, which is not dilapidated, not torn down, not, you know, run down or anything, but uh, our group would like to at least take a shot at uh, providing a large facility uh, uh, for someone, for a homeless provider to uh, come in and take advantage and, and make it work. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Mr. Eaton. Um, Lee, uh, Amy will be next, followed by Ash. Good afternoon. Thank you, Mayor. Our mic. Okay, thank you. I'm Amy Schwabenlender, Executive Director, of Human Services Campus, 204 South 12th Avenue. Just two short weeks ago, this council approved additional shelter beds at the campus, and we have not had a chance to publicly say thank you. So thank you, Mayor and Council, after much conversation, dialogue, and finding middle ground. Thank you for supporting our request to shelter more individuals. And as you know, along with that comes a comprehensive set of stipulations that do have expenses tied to them. So we appreciate this consideration of funding some of those items. The cost to CAS alone for one time and one year of operating expenses is estimated to be $2.4 million. For the Human Services Campus Inc. as the owner of the campus property and the special permit holder, we will incur costs to meet the stipulations, including increased cleaning on streets, sidewalks, and easements. We are hiring staff to keep restrooms open to the public until midnight, and there will be additional facility expenses, cleaning, and supplies related to Additionally, We expect additional safety and security expenses to ensure safety around the property and into the immediate neighborhood. And with the approval to have weather relief shelter beds, HSC will have ongoing costs for up to those 200 people during extreme weather events, staffing, supplies, such as mats and sheets, laundry and cleaning security. Our work at the campus spans 16 organizations serving up to 1,000 people per day. As was mentioned, we connect directly to the city strategies document and we seek approval on this item 27 to support not just the human services campus, but in those other line items mentioned and our partners to create more shelter in other locations, as well as services that help people move from street to home. So thank you so much for putting funding against your plan. I think this is an incredible step to demonstrate to other municipalities and jurisdictions that definitely the funding can be found to address homelessness and I'd be happy to answer any questions. Thank you. Thank you. We will go next to Ash followed by Lisa Glow. Hey, good afternoon members of the city council and Mayor Gallego. Um, I want to echo a lot of what has been said by Amy Schwab and Linder. I, I thank you for this allocation of funds. I believe that this will do a lot of good for the community. I think that these are all great funding sources for the kinds of services and ways that we need to address some of the needs in our community. So again, um, I just echo what Amy has said already, and I thank you for making this investment. Um, I really appreciate the addition of or clarification of some of the, the funds to go towards administrative things and um, work that will need to happen on the back end to ensure that we are doing this in a thoughtful and data-driven way. So thank you once again, um, and I appreciate these funds. Thank you. And our final speaker will be Lisa. Can you hear me? We can. Thank you so much, Mayor and Council members. This is tremendously exciting. Your leadership, compassion, and thoughtful and strategic planning this year, including all of the staff, has created tremendous momentum. So all of us in the homeless provider arena are grateful to you. So I'm speaking in support of item 27, specifically what I'd like you to, to know is we're really excited 
about the 2.4 million that will allow us to quickly scale up to 600 beds by the summer and get people off the streets in the immediate surrounding area around the campus. Importantly, this will require some physical upgrades, initial upgrades to the shelter, purchasing of new beds, renovations to the bathrooms. It'll also require, um, really uh, not require, but an improvement in trauma informed care. It's really important to us that we have a great shelter where people want to come inside. We've had waiting lists for years. The expansion will help us, but we also know there are people who are resistant to coming in by improving the quality of the shelter. We will be able to uh, get more people to come inside. So some of the funding is also for operations and staffing. So we have uh, move. We can move in the direction of 1 to 30 case management ratios. Secondly, thank you for the support to continue with project Haven with the additional funding through the end of September. It has been a tremendous, tremendous honor to operate that shelter program and the outcomes are showing how this is really helping seniors and medically vulnerable people. And our goal this year is to make it permanent and you'll be hearing more from us on that. We support the other allocations, the funding for the campus to comply, of course, with the stipulations and with all of the partners and all the work we're doing is going to be a great, great year. So thank you again for your leadership. I am happy to answer any questions and um, excited to continue contributing also to the regional expansion. We will make that happen in partnership. Thank you so much, Lisa, and thank you for mentioning caseworkers. Uh, we talk a lot about capital and buildings, but caseworkers are so important to ending homelessness and helping people navigate a solution. So would you just speak a little bit more about what we might be able to do with caseworkers and, and what this funding does with CAS and caseworkers? Yes, absolutely. I know one of the things with the zoning case, I know that was really important to the neighbors and to all of us is that we really transform the model, and that means more intensive services for the people coming on the campus. So CAS has always provided case management. There are other providers as well, but the best practices of 1 to 30 is the ratio that's recommended. We're currently around 1 to 40, and we also have a waiting list for senior citizens who need a case manager. They need more intensive support. So with this additional funding, we'll be able to hire more case managers and get to that 1 to 30 ratio. And there's there's a lot more going on as well that's exciting um, that's being discussed at the Phoenix Task Force around bringing more behavioral health services to the forefront for our clients, like we're doing at Project Haven, um, bringing in new partners to address gaps in services. So I, I guess I say that because I, I think it's important for the neighbors to know we're really committed to working with them and transforming the model to make it even better so that people permanently end their homelessness. And it starts with that one-on-one -on -one support connecting one-on-one. -on -one. Wonderful, thank you. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, that concludes public comment on this item. Thank you to our partners who will be advancing this item and congratulations to those recommended for funding. I also really wanted to recognize the regional collaboration support in Councilwoman Pastor's motion. We have to work together regionally and that includes on better and deeper data collection. So glad we'll have resources in that area. I hope our partners are inspired by what we are doing today and other jurisdictions make similar commitments. Uh, additional council member comments? Roll call. Tasisio. Yes. Garcia. Yes. Guardado. Yes. Nowakowski. Mayor, before my vote, I'd like to um, also thank our deputy city manager, Inger Erickson, our neighborhood services and our, our human service department for all their hard work and their outreach to the community to make sure that our home homeless plan is being is an active and living document. And that's a yes. Pastor. Yes. Dark. Yes. Waring. Yes. Williams. Yes. Gallego. Yes. Passes 9-0. Wonderful. By a vote of 9-0, the City Council has allocated $33 million to 
fight homelessness. Thank you so much to my colleagues and, and I agree with Councilman Nowakowski. Thank you to our staff for putting together this important plan that will, this money will make a real difference in our community and a great vote for the city council. We next move to item 28, which is a public hearing and authorizing amendment to chapter 14 of the Phoenix city code relating to taxes. I will open a public hearing on this item. Uh, we do not have any members of the public wishing to speak, so I will close the public hearing. Um, before we go into voting, I would say we are enacting required amendments uh, due to state legislative changes. Um, we are moving forward with state law. In many cases, this is disrupting local control, which is not something I like to see. And I wish the legislature had gone in a different direct in, direction. Uh, with that, I will let the, ask the city clerk to read the title. Item 28 is for ordinance G6808, an ordinance amending the Phoenix City Tax Code and regulations of chapter 14 of the Phoenix City Code to conform with the changes of the model city tax code as approved by Municipal Tax Code Commission, amending Article 1, Section 14-1, 10, Article 4, Sections 14-410, 14-415, 14-422, 14-445, 14-450, 14-455, 14-462, 14-465, 14-470, 14-475, 14-4, sorry, 14-480, Article 5, Section 14-530, Article 6, Section 14-660, Phoenix City Regulations 14-1415.1, 14-416.1, 14-416.2, and 14-470.1, and providing for retroactive effective dates. Nice job, thank you. Vice Mayor, do we have a motion? I would move approval. Second. Second from Councilwoman Stark. Any council comments? Roll call. DeCicio. Yes. Garcia. Yes. Guardado. Yes. <clears throat> Nowakowski. Yes. Pastor. Yes. Stark. Yes. Waring. Yes. Williams. Yes. Gallego. Yes. Passes 9-0. We next move to item 36, the master agreement with Oracle. Vice Mayor, do we have a motion? Move approval. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any comments? Roll call. DeCicio. Yeah. Garcia. I'm, I'm sorry, Mayor, no. Yes. Change my vote on that. No. Thank you, Councilman DeCicio. You bet. And Councilmember Gar uh, Garcia uh, Guardado. Yes. Nowakowski. Yes. Pastor. Yes. Stark. Yes. Waring. No. Williams. Yes. Gallego. Yes. Passes seven two. Passes seven to two, we still have a payroll system. All right, we move to item 64, water transmission main. Uh, Vice Mayor, do we have a motion? Move approval. Second. Motion and a second, any comments? Roll call. DeCicio. Yes. Garcia. Yes. Guardado. Yes. Nowakowski. Yes. Pastor. Yes. Stark. Yes. Waring. Yes. Williams. Yes. Gallego. Yes. Passes 9-0. Unanimous vote. We next move to the planning and zoning portion of our agenda. Item 79. I think if council members are comfortable, we will um, go straight to the public hearing. Yes. We'll open the public hearing. Uh, we do not have any members of the public here to 
comment on this item, so I will close the public hearing. Do we have a motion? Move approval. Second. And adopt motion the related approved. ordinance. <laughs> For, yeah, and adopt the related <laughs> ordinance. I agree. <laughs> Perfect. We will approve per the Planning Commission's approval. Any comments? Roll call. Desicio. Yes. Garcia. Yes. Guardado. Yes. Nowakowski. Yes. I apologize, Nowakowski. Is it yes? Thank you. Pastor? Yes. Stark? Yes. Waring? No. Williams? Yes. Gallego? Yes. Passes 8-1. We next move to item 80, which is related to the southeast corner of 107th Avenue in Camelback. I will open a public hearing. We do not have any members of the public wishing to address the council on this item, so I will close the public hearing. This item is in Council District 5, so I will turn to Councilwoman Guardado. Or the Vice Mayor. All right, I make the motion to approve per the Planning Commission's approval and adopt the related ordinance. M Mayor, members of council, th this is uh, Alan Stevenson. The this particular item 80 is a request to rescind the golf course zoning designation that was placed uh, by the council last fall on the uh, Via de Paz golf course. I believe that uh, the council desires to rescind that ordinance G6755 and then adopt the related ordinance. Second. <laughs> Um, Councilwoman Williams, did the planning director accurately capture your motion? Yes, he did. All right. Second. Motion and a second. Any comments? Roll call. Decisio. Yes. Garcia. Yes. Guardado. Nowakowski. Yes. Pastor. Yes. Stark. Yes. Waring. Yes. Williams. Yes. Gallego. Yes. This is eight zero. Thank you. Uh, we next move to item eighty one, which is an item placed on the council agenda by three council members. Um, who may do so by city ordinance. Um, in my case, I just wanna say that to me, police oversight is very important and I would like to continue to move forward with oversight and the Office of Accountability and Transparency. Uh, we do have a very large number of members of the public to address the council on this item. So likely I will take a break during this item. Um, would any council members like to say anything before we begin public comment? Mayor, would you like a motion? Uh, sure. Okay. I make the motion to uh, redirect the budget funds from this year's budget uh, from the Office of Accountability and Transparency to be spent on essential services for the homeless, particularly by CAS and the Human Service Campus. I would suggest two million to CAS, half million to the campus, and half a million to the city manager to address uh, how to redefine and how to change operations of the police department by calling in experts from around the country. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any council comments before we begin public comment? All right, uh, we will Mayor. begin with Mayor. Oh, sorry. I'm sorry, Councilwoman. I, I, didn't hear. I, had Councilwoman you, Pastor. I had you on mute. Sorry. Uh, can you read the the one two the third piece? I didn't hear it. 
of the motion. The third piece is to allocate the remainder of the money that's in the COVID that can't be spent this year to the city manager and the chief of police to contact and uh, address issues within the police department on how to reorganize it, provide better training, and weed out a lot of the problems that we're having. Thank you. Thank you, and I'll, uh, when we're done with council comments, we'll begin with Dr. Ann Hart. Um, any additional council member comments? All right, uh, we will go then to public comment beginning with Dr. Ann Hart, followed by Vanessa DiCarlo. And I hear some sound, but not clearly, Dr. Hart. Can you hear me? Can you hear me now? Now, now I can hear you beautifully. There, there was some okay, sound, great. but this is perfect. Thank you, Dr. Hart. Okay, thank you. And um, good evening, city council members. And thank you and good evening to you, Mayor Gallegos. I appreciate this opportunity. And this, I'm speaking to the Office of Accountability and Transparency, um, as noted as OAT. And I'd like to start off by saying on June the 8th, 2020, by, part, by a bipartisan 72 vote, City Council fully funded civilian oversight of the Phoenix Police Department. But what remains to be seen is what exactly transpired in the past six months for the allocation of the OAT funding. Now, this is a no-brainer. Accountability and transparency is like bread and butter, shoes to your feet, and books to education. There must be a system to govern the who, what, and when as a method of transparent governance. Now, I am a member of City Council 8, and I have spoken to many constituents who also are members of City Council 2 and 6. The office, and they agree and wish that the Office of a Transparency and Accountability, which will help to support generational change and exterminate improprieties, thus creating an umbrella of oversight which promotes increased community trust. This will eliminate uncertainty and fear when it comes to community policing, training, and police con misconduct. Lately, we have been viewed through a magnifying glass of police brutality across America, including questionable police shootings. And how better way to accomplish any public discrepancies and concerns than through transparency and accountability? Phoenix has been highlighted for being the sixth largest city in the U.S., and we can use this moment in Phoenix history to improve transparency and a more robust accountability mechanisms to improve police relations and build and strengthen trust between our communities and the police. Let us not terminate funding previously allocated for OAT. Thank you. Thank you. Vanessa will be next, followed by Dr. Uh, Bishop Paul. Bishop Anthony Holt. Vanessa DiCarlo. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Great. Um, everybody up here is capable of making decisions, can absolutely um, change things if you actually wanted to. So this makes me understand that for as long as I have been in these meetings for an entire year, you have consistently made decisions to not address accountability, that this system is actually designed to cage and target people currently, right now, protesters. So you're making these decisions, knowing that you also have been in these same meetings with me, and continue to do the same thing and expect a different result. Which is why the only thing that makes sense is to defund the situation, the whole situation, the police department, because 
there is no way that a accountability will ever happen. You have been in these meetings. You have those decision-making skills. This isn't new information. So defund the police, make a different choice, put the actual funds to where the problem is. There isn't enough funding for covering and eradicating the need for shelters and really truly responding to unsheltered populations. There's so much money that can be used to actually move the needle if you defund the police, which is what we want. And if you don't want to do that, and if you don't want to denounce the deadly Maricopa County Attorney's Office and stand up for those protesters, we are coming for your, your position. And we will vote people. Thank you. Bishop Holt will be followed by Joseph Mulkern. Good afternoon, Mayor Gallego and members of council. Thank you. My name is Bishop Anthony Holt. I'm West Valley NAACP president. And as uh, Dr. Hart said, Dr. Hart said earlier, last year in June, there was a bipartisan vote, seven to two, to fully fund the Office of Accountability and Transparency. Now, I heard what the earlier vote was on the homeless situation, and I uh, applaud uh, Councilwoman Pastor, as well as all members of council, dealing with the homeless population. I have worked with the homeless population and with CAS and other organizations for years in the city of Phoenix, and I know the devastation that it causes. But I also know the devastation that's going on with our police departments, the shootings, the, the conversation that is the, in the community of why, how, what, and who. Those questions are not being answered. And just frankly, $3 million is not gonna solve the homeless problem. And can we find another way to exhaust all the resources? What about federal funds from HUD? There are other monies that come from the federal government that will help us assist in homelessness. Plus homelessness is not a yesterday's problem. It's an everyday problem. But our police department needs to have the citizens behind it. The citizens need to be able to trust what is going on when the decisions are made, when we find every day the news says another person has been shot or another community has been terrorized by a system that they feel is unfair? What better way to bring some sense of morality and, and unity to the community by having the community be a part of the conversation when it comes to Office of Accountability and Transparency? I applaud you, I ask you today to look deeply into this conversation and say, if we remove this money from one, is it really going to move the needle on the other? And is there a better way to find that money to help the population that so duly deserves it by not hurting another population that so duly deserves it? Thank you for your time. Thank you. Uh, Joseph will be next, followed by Kenneth Smith. Hello, can you all hear me? Yes, we can. Good. Hi there, members of the City Council and Mayor Gallego. My name is Joseph Mulkern and I currently live in District 6. This item on the roster makes me incredibly upset. I spent a lot of time with the people experiencing homelessness in our community. And from my time spent with them, I've seen countless instances in which the policemen of Phoenix abuse and terrorize the people there. You can't help those experiencing homelessness by giving more power to a police force that hurts them. I've been working to get more shelter beds for the homeless since 2019. I called in just two weeks ago to voice my support. I and countless others called in during the Black Lives Matter protests over the summer to ask you to defund the police. The amount of time it has taken for action to be done on either of these issues was upsetting. Even more upsetting is that it took members of the Phoenix City Council a short two weeks to force the citizens of Phoenix to choose between helping our community members in need or keeping accountability against one of the most lethal police forces in the country. This is incredibly embarrassing for our community. I want nothing more than to help those experiencing homelessness, but it makes me incredibly sick and upset that Phoenix City Council is pitting civilian oversight against helping issues related to homelessness. Thank you all for listening. I yield the rest of my time. Thank you. Mr. Smith will be followed by Ash Us. Hello, can you hear me? Hello, can you hear me? We can hear you. Fantastic. Hi, this is Kenneth Smith from the Unity Collective and Unity for Arizona calling a, in a unified message to the city council. We can walk and chew gum at the same time. 
the homelessness issue in, in this city has been partially solved by the allocation of funds from the CARES Act in your previous int item. We need to not pit homeless against oversight. People are unsheltered against accountability. We owe it as a city to be able to do both. And you already have. You have just done what you are saying you can no longer do. You are saying that you can give money through the CARES Act and that you can continue to support and open four new shelters, but then turn around and say you want to take another $3 million from the Office of Accountability and Transparency. I am completely, and the Unity Collective is completely opposed to taking money and defunding a system that has been built by so many people in the community from District 8 and beyond to do what is right for the people of Phoenix, Arizona. We owe it to all of us to continue to do the work we've come together in unity. I, I, I implore all people who are listening to this to come together to make sure that we are consistently on these calls to call action to the right thing. The fact that we have council members who would even want to move money and also continue to stop exec consecutive funds, meaning in the future to the Office of Accountability and Transparency shows that the accountability and transparency portion of who they are as people does not exist. District 6, this is Kevin Smith, and I'm coming for your seat. We are done with sitting around and waiting for you to make the right decision. So now, in come 2022, we need to have somebody else in that seat, and hopefully it's me, because we are no longer going to sit here and have these conversations about moving money and pitting two deprived populations against each other. People of color and, and systematic racism is alive. And homelessness is. We cannot continue to do this. Ash will be next, followed by Twana Ray. My name is Ash. Uh, I've been working on issues pertaining to homelessness for the past few years. I'm really opposed to the portion of this request, which defunds the OAT in future years. You may think it's strange that I, an advocate and provider in homelessness, am opposed to this, but I oppose this strongly because of the racial disparities in homelessness. People of color are more likely to be victims of police violence, and we know that people who are Black or African American make up roughly 30% of the total population of people experiencing homelessness. So taking funds away from accountability and transparency, no matter where they end up, it seems harmful to our community at large, but it's harmful to the folks that I work with. I oppose this on a much more personal and spiritual level. When I was 18, an off-duty police officer got drunk, blew a red light, and hit me in my vehicle. I ended up in the hospital, and although it's been almost 10 years, I still haven't seen a police report, and I'm a white person with a lot of privilege. Most importantly, I oppose this because I know that members of the council are using the needs for resources as a vehicle to defund another need in our community, and it feels corrupt, and it feels manipulative, and it feels wrong. Many, if not all of you, know how committed I am to helping people on the streets. I've spent years trying to do everything I can to make things better for folks, but I see the polls and chains being put up, and I see this on the agenda, and it makes me question what we're doing. We need more funds. We just approved more funds, and there are appropriate funding sources for the things that we need. If I can keep trying to find solutions and resources for people lacking shelter while fighting cancer, you can find the resources to help people on the streets while not harming another community. Our city deserves funding for homelessness and police accountability and transparency. So please do not support this. Thank you. Thank you. Twana will be next, followed by Ann Ender. And for our staff, could you please uh, unmute? Twana? Thank you. Can you hear me? Oh, perfect. Now, yes, now we can. Oh, thank you very much. Uh, good, good, uh, good afternoon uh, to mayor and city council members. Uh, thank you for the opportunity to speak this afternoon. Uh, my name is uh, Twana Ray. I am the uh, president of the Broadway States Block Watch Association, the vice president of the Broadway Heritage Neighborhood Association, and I'm also a member that serves on the South Mountain Village Planning Committee. Um, I just want to say today, um, I oppose this measure. I heard uh, the motion made earlier, 
it's it's for funded for one year. I do support helping the homeless and the most vulnerable, but any officer that is acting with integrity should have no issue with an office of accountability and transparency. If 2020 has taught us as a society anything, it should be that accountability is necessary. Minorities are dis, dis, uh, uh, proportionately arrested, assaulted, and murdered, regardless of compliance. This continues to occur, and officers are not being held accountable. Why would our elected officials have an issue with transparency if there's no corruption? I have no issue with the police. And as a Black woman, I saying a great deal because I've had some bad interactions but not all police are bad, but there does need to be some civilian oversight. Thank you very much. I yield the remainder of my time. Thank you. Anne will be next, followed by Vidi Hernandez. Peter and I'm Mayor and council members, I'm Ann Ender and I'm a neighborhood leader and resident of D District 6. I support this request to reallocate the $3 million budgeted for the Office of Accountability and Transparency to support the services being provided at the Human Services Campus. Here's the reason why. We know the pandemic has exacerbated already an already dire situation and the most affected being the homeless and under, with underlying physical and mental health issues. Not to mention the businesses and neighborhoods surrounding the HSC have been seriously impacted. Now with the strategies to address homelessness that was adopted in October, the city has a robust scope of work that council member Nowakowski just referred to as an actionable and living plan. With the appointments to the Homeless Strategies Task Force, the momentum has begun, with the task force about to meet for their second meeting. Many of the funding proposals debated at the Council this year lack detail and a plan of action, and OAT is one of those proposals. Therefore, considering the fiscal year is about half over, and there's no consensus on a plan for police oversight, reallocation seems to be the right thing to do. Thank you. Thank you. Vidi Hernandez will be followed by jo Joanna Haygood. Hi, this is Vidi. Um, uh, Hernandez is put in action. I am troubled again by this ridiculous demand by the council members. Uh, council member Williams, um, you're not even the council person anymore and making these demands is ridiculous. The Phoenix Police Department has a history and a record of racism, of targeting of protesters, of celebrating white supremacy. The only thing that needs to be defunded is this department. Yes, we need to fund resources for our unsheltered community, but those resources must come from this violent and unaccountable department. City Manager Zerka recently said, this department is going to change and I demand it. You have been saying this for years. The city was aware of the white supremacy challenge coin since 2017 and have done nothing. You were aware of the lies of the false charges and Jamar Williams, and you have done nothing. You were aware of the illegal activity, cavity, the illegal cavity search on Erica Reynolds, and you have done nothing. You were aware of the killing of Alex, Michelle, Ryan, James, Paco, and so many other people, and you have done nothing. You're also currently negotiating a police contract that continues to protect police violence. This must, you must reject this police contract that gives more protections include independent investigations so any kind of oversight can actually be meaningful. You must defund this department and demand the job of all the charges on protesters right now. Thank you. Joanna will be next, followed by Carol Coles Henry. Hello, my name is Johanna Haygood and I'm a white cis queer person living on Akima Odom land. I once again am outraged at the latest news about the Phoenix PD. I demand that the officers we already know aided the creation of the neo-Nazi challenge coined and or kept or shared it are immediately fired. Fire all the officers involved with the neo-Nazi coin, including Lieutenant Ben Moore, George Hare, Jeffrey Howell, Glenn Neville, Jay Scott, John Sticka, and Officer Bryce. Fire all the officers not currently named that helped create, share, or keep 
this disgusting coin that celebrates PPD's neo-Nazi culture. And I also want to remind every council member the harm being done towards black and brown bodies is in fact a reality. I suggest you wake up and stop upholding white supremacist ideologies and start protecting the people of the community. I yield my time. Carol Colt Henry will be next, followed by Katie Gibson McLean. Thank you. Good afternoon, Mayor Gallego, Vice Mayor, and members of the council. My name is Carol Colt Henry. I'm a retiree for the city of Phoenix. I was the director of the Equal Opportunity Department, and I also was an interim deputy city manager responsible for the issues of homelessness, as well as the issues of equal employment and civil rights. The reason why I'm calling today, I'm requesting that you vote no on this item for several reasons. Homelessness and civilian oversight, police accountability and trust are the moral, two of the serious moral issues of our time. As leaders of this city, you have an opportunity to work with your creative and professional staff to identify any and all resources that can address, address both of these issues. They have the talents, the skills, and abilities and knowledge to look at not only this earmark fund of $3 million, uh, but the entire city of Phoenix budget and to identify creative ways to fund both of these things. I urge you to vote no on this formal agenda item number 81 and to immediately use the, the $3 million as earmarked for the creation of the Office of Transparency and Accountability. I truly believe that the Community Police Trust Initiative Report of 2015 and the incredible citizens that volunteered to bring forth this recommendation is something that you should remain committed to. Phoenix has always been a leader in regards to addressing these types of issues. And so I urge you to remain committed to the 3 million in funding for the OAT and the task staff to identify any and all resources to address the equitability and the fairness of all the issues that are on the table. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, Katie will be next. Gibson McLean, followed by Elizabeth Venable. Good afternoon. My name is Katie Gibson McLean. I worked on creating the proposal with a coalition of folks for the Office of Accountability and Transparency. I also served on the ad hoc committee and I am a public defender. Many of my clients are homeless and many of my clients rely on the services at CAS. And I drive by the area every day to park my car at my office and see what's happening downtown. But this is not the time to pit issues against each other. The amendment made by Phelps Williams is ridiculous. It's ridiculous to think that some folks, the same folks that are responsible for the culture that we are seeing right now come to light, Ed Zerker and Jerry Williams, are going to be able to address or fix any issues that are happening right now. Absolutely ridiculous. And absolutely ridiculous to think that you sat through an entire almost year of meetings in the ad hoc committee and think that that's an appropriate response, Ms. Williams. You've proven yourself to be a shill. Ann Ender says from District 6 says that the OAT lacks detail on a plan of action. Actually, that's because this council hasn't been able to figure out how to get that plan of action to move forward. In fact, many people on this council are trying to prevent that. Ms. Hernandez, Ms. Beauty Hernandez listed so many things that this council knew about and has neglected. One of those things is very personal to me because a case was just dismissed last week for my client, Mr. Ryder Collins, who was illegally arrested, charged with ridiculous false charges. He's innocent. He is a nurse from Prescott who has been stressed for months. And one of the officers she listed who's admitted to buying this Nazi challenge coin, I've watched on video berate my very kind client. After her at a Nazi challenge and decided to arrest my client, no reason, even said on body cam, he didn't quite know why he was arresting my client and then berated him inappropriately on camera. This is the type of behavior that needs to be stopped and we can't do it at the expense of pitting communities against each other and the communities that are affected. 
Elizabeth uh, Venable is next, followed by Phil Martinez. Oh, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Hello. Okay, thank you. New technology. Um, I want to talk about accountability uh, in a couple of different ways, the importance of accountability. And one of the things that I wanted to talk about, about funding the human services campus, is that it also needs accountability. People die on the lots they run. We have gotten this reported and documented in the media. Um, if you're too disa physically disabled to take care of yourself, then you can't be there. Also, if you're too mentally disabled to take care of yourself, you similarly cannot be there. I met a very sunburned woman one time who was newly homeless and was extremely shocked when she could not access these facilities because she was in a wheelchair. So um, I see the CAS also needs accountability. But what really shows a lack of commitment to justice is the idea that you would pay the cops through this money to reorganize how they are policing homelessness, essentially, because that is what it seems like the money is meant to do. I could be wrong. Um, but I want to mention that uh, you're still only marginally following Martin v. Boise, but you're completely ignoring a ruling called Levon v. City of Los Angeles, which means that you can't throw away the property of people experiencing houselessness, nor threaten to throw away the property of people experiencing houselessness. So there's no reason why you should be transferring accountability money to police on the human services campus to not hold them to account for Martin or Levon v. City of Los Angeles. Um, I would also say that you did not approve the low barrier shelter, so you're providing no real alternative for the campers and only doing clear. Thank you. Thank you. Phil will be followed by Janelle Woods. All right. How many more people does this city council plan to victimize? This is a serious question, and I have been in this exact spot before you all telling you all more people will die at the hands of our police. Since then, we have seen numerous cases like Ryan Whitaker, Dion Johnson, James Garcia, and many more. Your inaction has me asking my opening question and many other questions as well. First, let me state something. Sal, we are not anti-police. My family who lost a son worked for the police for decades. Ryan Whitaker's family is legendary Arizona law enforcement. Hardly anti-police if you ask me. So why are you so quick to label us? We assume you are playing politics, Sal and Felda, and we do not like it. Like I've said before, more good people are going to die. That is fact. Every five days, your police force shoots someone. So instead of continuing to divide, can our leaders leave and listen to our calls before it's one of their family who is on the table? We strongly oppose defunding the Office of Accountability. We need help holding officers accountable when they make a mistake. We also demand justice for our dead family members like Brian Whitaker, James Garcia, Deion Johnson, and many more. We're not going away. We also demand you drop all charges against protesters, and we demand all officers, including Ben Moore, who participated in the coin, be fired and stripped of their pensions. I want to address how you all were fooled weeks ago by our police department, who was in here defrauding the city for money for a riot that did not happen. Are we to assume that our leaders are incapable of seeing through the BS and the lies that were spewed to you that day, or are you simply refusing to? You all paid the money and allowed the police to target police for protesters and silence their First Amendment rights. Since that meeting, ABC 15 has shown evidence that shows exactly why we should be funding the Board of Accountability and not defunding it. Sal and Thelda, you attacked the people today, and more people are seeing through the BS, and Phoenix deserves leaders that are not afraid to stand up for the people. Detective Hurt, I want to point this out, is the detective who is holding numerous protesters' property from the summer's protest. It's kind of funny to see his bright, shiny, bald head in here. It reminds me of another officer who recently lied to officials as well, Doug McBride. I wonder if these bald heads stick together. Thank you. Janelle Woods will be next, followed by Anicia Groves. Uh, can everyone hear me? Yes, we can. First of all, greetings, uh, Mayor Gallegos and uh, fellow city council members. My name is Janelle Woods, uh, the uh, president of the Black Mothers Forum. Uh, I just want to uh, implore each one of the 
council members to vote no on this particular uh, agenda item because, uh, as we all know, uh, the Office of Accountability and Transparency part, and it is this is the reason why I served on the ad hoc committee with the mayor's office on policing. And one of my fellow cohorts stated it very well that we spent months on this over a year making sure that we put the things in place that needed to make sure our officers were held accountable to make sure our people was transparency and that we as people have a voice in how we are being uh, served by those men and women who were to protect and serve us. Uh, this particular uh, agenda item trying to stop $3 million is trying to put two human issues against another human issue. Both of them are important. It is very important that we take care of our homeless community, but it's just as important that we preserve all the rest of our marginalized communities so they too feel safe. It's all about feeling safe and supported in our community. And we know that this particular office that we were fighting for for several months will do that for us. And I thought that when I spoke with many of you before, that you were about making sure that we ensure, entrust, ensure the trust of the community. Getting rid of this $3 million does not lead us into a place where we feel like there's trust. And so I'm asking each and every one of you to vote no on 81. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Groves will be followed by Katie Beza. Hi, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Thank you. First, I'd like to voice that I fully support the demands on the citizens petition. And now for my opposition to this item 81. This is a classic white supremacist divide and conquer move, but we aren't stupid. Sal, Felda, and Jim don't give a damn about unsheltered folks, and they know it, and the rest of you know it. It's vile that you would use unsheltered people as a pawn in your games to defund police accountability, especially right after that pathetic back padding session you just had over all your fabulous hard work, quote unquote, fighting homelessness. By the way, what is this fighting anyway, a war against poor people? The resources to house everyone have always been readily available if you could just get your priorities straight. Speaking of which, how about you focus on defunding Phoenix PD? And over 20 people are still facing prison time because they were targeted and slapped with false gang charges by lying dirty cops and prosecutors. You must focus on demanding the county attorney's officer office adjust the motion to dismiss on the 1017 cases to be with prejudice. Pass a resolution to call in the county attorney's office to drop all charges, including 718, 89, 103, and any other outlying charges with prejudice. Demand municipal court dismiss all misdemeanor charges. Demand the county attorney hold the officers who lied under oath accountable and fire all prosecutors involved in the protest charges. Katie Beza will be next, followed by Rebecca Dennis. Hi, my name is Katie Baeza, lifetime resident of Phoenix. Anne mentioned earlier that we're halfway through the fiscal year and still haven't used the funds for OAT, so she supported using the funds elsewhere. I'm feeling, was that your goal? To not organize an OAT that would actually get a majority vote so these funds would go unused and you could just kill it? My brother Ryan Whitaker was killed by a Phoenix police officer last year. I was hoping that a precedent would be set with my brother's case. But since the county attorney didn't have the courage to set that precedent, we're still dealing with police who know they won't be held accountable. You do realize that not holding police accountable puts the community on guard because we have all seen that even if you comply or surrender, you can still be killed and that officer will still be on the job with no repercussions. It makes policing a lot more difficult when they're dealing with a community that does not trust them. Because I'm sorry, but why would anybody not put up a, a fight at this point? The way I see it, the longer it takes for the council to employ the OAT, you're actually putting both police and citizens in harm's way. Something else I don't understand. You just wanna keep throwing money at these cases rather than preventing these cases. That is so confusing to me. I realize that the city attorney does a very good job at either dehumanizing or criminalizing people even further so they get no money or keep the amount under what your insurance covers. But one day someone will win against the city attorney, or maybe that's it. 
the more transparent the police department is, the more money the city will have to pay out for wrongful treatment and deaths by police officers. So instead of fixing the problem and saving some lives while you're at it, you'd rather just squash the oath. I'm honestly really trying to understand the thought process here. I mean, we start disciplining children at a very early age. It's not a foreign concept. I don't understand. Is it wrong to assume that if a police, if police knew they had to be transparent and would be held accountable for their actions, they may do things differently and avoid these cases altogether? Rebecca will be followed by Hava Derby. Hi, thank you. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Thank you very much. My name is Rebecca Denis. Um, I live in District 7. I am beyond myself that we are even having this conversation right now. I don't understand how we could even pit homelessness against police accountability. 2020 has shown me that the city of Phoenix truly does not care for Black lives, for people of color, or the people that suffer at the hands of the police violence that is more than like just bleeding out of the Phoenix Police Department. The council talks about progress. Phoenix talks about progress all the time. And yet the progress we're getting is that what you did was make it impossible to create OAT, make it impossible to have independent police investigations, and then made it seem like it was a failure of the people who have been fighting for police accountability, who have been fighting for transparency. You just yourselves allotted 33 million towards homeless shelter services or homeless services, and that's wonderful. But I don't understand why $3 million, which in the scheme of a city budget isn't that much money, in the scheme of the amount of money you are negotiating right now to fund the police, to give them almost half of the city's tax dollars, $3 million to create transparency, to create, to create accountability, that's the issue. The fact that you would manipulate something like homelessness to do so, Williams, DeCicio, and Waring, I am disgusted by you, truly disgusted. And I hope if you believe in a God, he judges you thoroughly and without mercy the day you are before him. I'm just going to yield my time because I'm so angry, but defund the police. Let's make some real progress. And you all really need to think about the position of power you are in. Hava will be followed by Sarah Ford. Hi there. Um, I did miss off the meeting. Uh, Ms. Williams, you were asked for clarification. Um, and you were we were told that, that the police uh, the police chief is getting part of this money. Excuse me, am I, am I missing something? This is just this proposal is it's not a magnanimous move. It's a message. It's a drop in the bucket. It's a message. We do not trust you your police department and city and county attorney. We don't trust you any more than we did before this proposal. So accountability is not something we're willing to shelve. And I'm going to echo the beautiful Ash and say that those that care about the homeless want to see the police not harass and kill the homeless. So on behalf of the homeless, please have an office of accountability and oversight for the police. They are obviously dangerous. They are racist. You have admitted a problem. You've admitted it. Ed just admitted it. This is not going away. I don't even understand. Can we actually, maybe Garcia, you'll address this. Delta, Jim, Sal, what is the reasoning behind this? I don't think we've heard the reasoning. What is your reasoning? Why don't you think now there needs to be accountability and oversight? It makes no sense. So can we hear from you on this? I say no to 81, as do my colleagues my friends, those being harassed by these cops, no on 81, and Kenneth Smith for District 6, 2022. Thank you so much. I yield the rest of my time. Sarah will be next, followed by Chelsea Friday. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Thank you. City Council and Mayor, I'm here for two reasons. 
One, to fully support the demands of the citizens petition. And two, I'm here today to ask you one simple question. Whom do you think you were fooling? After repeated demands from BIPOC leadership and the community to defund the police, your answer is to defund the Office of Accountability and Transparency? The nation is watching as ABC 15 uncovers what everyone in this meeting has known for years. Phoenix police are racist, violent, and unabashedly ashamed. Less than two weeks after this council voted to deny new shelter with low barriers, Sal DeCicio, Felda Williams, and Jim Waring, you all take the initiative to defund the only semblance of accountability Phoenix PD has had in the name of helping to address the needs of one of Phoenix's most vulnerable populations. Your duplicity is uncanny, though fortunately your constituents know exactly where your true intentions lie to continue to protect officers who harm, harass, and murder in our community while continuing to criminalize and encourage violence against our most vulnerable neighbors. When you vote against low barrier access to shelter, you are enacting violence. When a national news outlet highlights the pervasive neo-Nazi culture of Phoenix police, and you try to cut funding for the only office with the power to investigate the rampant and racist violent systemic issues of policing in the city, you again are enacting violence. End the violence. End the political persecution of protesters. The Maricopa County Attorney Office must drop all charges with prejudice, which they only dropped as a re direct result of ABC 15's investigative journalism over the lives of the arresting cops and the cop protector Adele Allister. As the current status of dropping them without prejudice is nothing more than an empty gesture that can be revoked as soon as the cameras leave and you all feel comfortable returning to violence as usual. Vote no on this transparent attempt to further remove accountability from Phoenix PD under the guise of helping our homeless neighbors to whom you've already demonstrated you don't care. Chelsea is next, followed by Anna Hernandez. Hernandez. Hello everyone. My name is Chelsea Friday and I'm the leader of the Rudyville Neighborhood Association. Um, I mean, we have $27 million allocated to assist in reducing homelessness. And item 27 just approved that the Human Services Campus is going to receive 3 million of that money directly. And my question is, is does that not grant what you are requesting for with item number 81? On February 3rd, the HSC was granted 425 additional beds. And even though 100 of those didn't go to the Andre house like many wanted, there are other shelters and spaces for shelters to start moving toward the regional shelter goal. I, I just don't understand why human life is a constant debate. Uh, why was this request proposed by the vice mayor and two of our council members who are supposed to represent the people of the community? And the only answer that I can keep coming back to is that this request is so politically driven and human life shouldn't be political at all. Why would you wanna take money out of a program that only benefits the citizens of Phoenix? Why wouldn't you want your police departments conducting themselves at the highest level possible? Because right now it's not happening. And you all know that it's not happening. We see it every day. During this vote, I would like someone to ask why this request is being submitted so we can have an answer as to why this request w was put forth by these individuals. So please vote no on item 81 and do what is right for our community and, and for our city. Thank you. Thank you. Anna will be followed by Jennifer Hernandez. Hi, can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Um, this is Anna Hernandez. I'm a resident of District 4. Um, I'd like to start with quoting the city manager in the report that was issued after the ABC story. Um, the more information we learn, the more concerned I become. I believe the majority of Phoenix police officers do great work for community every day, he said. But it's obvious we have deep-rooted issues in the Phoenix Police Department that must be addressed. This department is going to change. I demand it. Chief Williams demands it. And the public expects it. Now, to me, that seems pretty clear when the city manager is acknowledging on record that we have an issue within the department and the, police, the officers in rank. Um, in the previous item 27, we just approved $33 million to be allocated to um, 
combat our unsheltered um, problems and help our community. Also, there's, I believe there's an existing over $20 million that is already budgeted to help our unsheltered folks. So I'm really lost on where we keep coming back to this and we keep not prioritizing the sanctity of human life. The fact that you have three council members that are using this to undermine what the community has fought for is ridiculous. And we see through it because you cannot gaslight us any longer. We are becoming aware and involved of exactly where some of these council members stand and the community's done accepting the nonsense that keeps coming. So I oppose this so much because the fact that these three council members think that $3 million from the Office of Accountability is going to help solve our unsheltered problem speaks volumes in itself. We all know that this is just a political ploy. They don't want accountability. They want to keep being enablers for the corrupt police officers in ranks for the city of Phoenix. And we need better. We demand better and we deserve better. Thank you. Jennifer will be followed by Kelly Kwok. Hello, my name is Jennifer. I, my representative is unfortunately Michael Nowakowski. Uh, City Manager Serker, last week when you said this department is going, to ch is going to change, I demand it. Why are you lying about this again? Because if you mean it, city leadership needs to demand the rest of these charges against protesters to be dropped. We know that when we when cops see black and brown, they automatically think that we are thugs or we are gangsters. We are much more than that. And it is now not our fault that these cops' parents r raise races as humans. We shouldn't be paying the way because of the way that we're raised. We are human, we have families, and we have brains, bigger ones at that. And you need to drop these charges now. Because if you mean it when you say you want change, then the budget and the police union contract needs to be a reflection of that commitment to change. You must end you must end the special protections and the money to this racist, unaccountable department that has proven alignment with white supremacy and has been politically targeting people who are critical of their violence. Stop celebrating doing the bare minimum for homeless people. Instead, ask yourself, how did they get there? And why homeless people keep, why does our homeless population keep growing? Instead, ask yourself that. And that's how you're gonna solve the real problem by doing real work and not doing the bare minimum. Start defunding the formerly known slave patrols, also known as cops. And I'm not gonna thank you because this, this is my time. This is my community. I, we put you out there. So no, no thanks. Kelly will be followed by Benjamin Lewis. Yes, thank you to the last caller. City Council and Mayor, you want to defund police accountability, but you won't defund the police. It seems if you were appalled by the actions of Phoenix PD, they would publicly denounce them and work to make them accountable. Yet you all sit by and do nothing. We have more than 20 people still facing prison time because they were targeted and slapped with false gang charges by lying dirty cops, April Sponsel, and Nick Mashad. You must demand MCAO drop all charges. You must vote no on item 81. I yield my time. Benjamin will be followed by Marissa Leva. Hi, can everyone hear me? Yes, we can. Okay, thank you so much. Um, I appreciate everyone taking the time to be here with me. I count myself as the 27th person now who just agrees with us and we've all been waiting for quite some time to be heard. So um, I'll try to get right to the point. I think we're talking about whether this is a thing uh, between homelessness or policing, but I think we're ignoring how much policing can contribute to homelessness. Uh, Council uh, member Garcia probably knows this, but in parts of his district, we spend over $2 million uh, incarcerating and policing uh, one block uh, that's a lot of people whose families are broken and torn apart. That's a lot of people who are no longer around able to help out. Um, and these are the people that we are seeing in the streets. Um, I have been safely and securely housed for 10 years and 354 days, but before that I was homeless. Um, I'm happy to say now that I am uh, no longer homeless. That's true for most people who experience homelessness. They're just our neighbors who have fallen on tough times. And 
um, the harm of policing really has an opportunity to throw more of our neighbors into tougher and tougher times. And it's, it, it's, it's embarrassing and um, really mind boggling that council's only solution seems to be to give them more money um, and not to oversee what they're doing. I think um, we know that there are racist neo-Nazis. Which one's going to show up um, when you call the police? Uh, is, is there an appropriate number? Maybe a direct question is appropriate in this moment, I've learned. Uh, Mayor Gallego, is there an appropriate number of police officers who are uh, practicing neo-Nazis? I reserve my time for after the answer. Marissa will be followed by Lucy Liu. Hi, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Hi, uh, I'm Marissa Leva. I'm one of the protesters from 1017 that just recently had their case dropped. And it's honestly extremely infuriating and offensive that this is even something being discussed right now, considering we've all seen the ABC 15 investigative report. And that is the only bit of accountability we've seen at all, because it's certainly not coming from the city and it's not coming from Phoenix PD. They've exposed the political prosecution, the the uh, targeted arrest of black leaders and well-known activists, um, the neo-Nazi coin, the horrible things that were said on body worn camera about me. And you want to you guys want to talk about not funding the Office of Accountability and Transparency? especially to take that money and put it towards homelessness when a great thing to do for the homeless would be to defund the police, considering how much time they spend criminalizing the homeless. It's absolutely insane to me. And all protest charges need to be dropped. This, a, a no vote is the bare minimum the city council can do. And yeah, I yield the rest of my time. Lucy will be followed by Tara Lohman Rojas. Hi, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Hello. Okay, good. Um, my name is Lucy. I was also one of the protesters that were arrested on 1017. A lot of you guys haven't heard my story because I am a minor. At 17 years old, I was arrested by cops for standing on the side of a sidewalk and giving a black guy that lasted for more than two weeks. While I was in their custody, they A, dislocated my shoulder, but also we're bragging about how teams were going in to arrest people in the, in the Phoenix area. There were eight different teams and I listened to all of them brag about how they were gonna use different tactics. One of them, team three specifically, with Officer Volk specifically, talked about how they were gonna go towards homeless people and arrest them for being homeless. That is absolutely disgusting considering the fact that before the white man has come to America, there wasn't homelessness in America. And now one in 200 Native, are, that people identify as Native American, are homeless. You are on Native land. And your people, the white men you put in office, are absolutely disgusting for not respecting that. I understand this is a very emotional debate, but please use respectful language. We hope to be a body of government that children can watch and participate in is inappropriate. Luce, uh, Tara will be followed by Tina Luna. Oh, oh, hello, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Okay, thank you. Um, so I'm here today to support the demand of the citizens petition. The request submitted by Felda Williams, Sal DeSuccio, and Jim Warning provides more evidence that these council members are cronies to the highest publicly funded neo-Nazi organization in the state, the Phoenix Police Department. This council continues to ignore the people's cry for transparency and accountability through independent civilian guided investigations of the hate group Phoenix Police Department. Not sure if you have noticed, but the political climate is shifting here in Phoenix. People are listening and they're watching the news. Your alliance with white supremacy 
and continued lack of concern with the murder of black and brown folks at the hands of the anti-black Phoenix Police Department will soon result in your removal from office by the hands by the hands of the currently more progressive voters in Phoenix. Show that you are listening and oppose this redirection of funds. We need the excessive funds provided to the white supremacist organization, also known as the Phoenix Police Department, to be redirected to address this issue, not the funds allocated to investigate them. Work with black leadership to build a real system of independent, transparent accountability. Demand MCAO drop all protest charges today. Fire all of the neo-Nazi cops who knew about the challenge coin and fire city manager Ed, who oversees the most violent police department in the country. Thank you. Tina is next, followed by Dr. Maldonado. Yeah, I'm sorry, did you? Yeah, hi, um, excuse me, I was distracted. So I just wanted to say um, it's reprehensible that we must track your every move and exert so much extra labor and for follow these meetings for you know a whole afternoon, wasting our time. Well, not wasting, you know what I mean. But it's literally your job to make sure your constituents are taken care of. Taking money from the oath and giving it to the homeless is just hurting one community to benefit another when that 3 million is 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 not going to make that much difference with the homeless especially since you're getting the cares money but what really concerns me is how you all protect the very violent anti black system that is the phoenix city Council, police, uh, district attorney, city manager, um, we demand justice. And I fully support the nine items on the citizens' petition. And if you just fired all the police that were in, that were lying to the grand jury, making this challenge coin, just there, you'd have your $3 million to um, give to the homeless. So, and you wouldn't have to take it out of the oat. We know you don't want oversight. We know it's just lip service, but open your eyes. It's just, it it's so abhorrent what's happening. It This really needs to change. And you folks are the ones who need to make the change. Thank you. Dr. Maldonado is next, followed by Christopher Martinez. Hi, thank you. My name is Dr. Maldonado. I'm with Ibarra Maldonado Law Group. And I want to begin, first of all, by addressing your comment, Mayor, about respect. Um, you know, I know you say that you understand um, that this is emotional and that um, we need to remain respectful. But I don't think that you actually do understand because I feel that I'm speaking today in opposition of item 81. If you all really understood, you would understand that this proposal is not only insensitive, but it's extremely violent. How dare you try to address one human need from the funds aimed at addressing another? And it's not just any need that we're talking about. We're talking about a need that is long overdue. It's desperate. The need, the drastic need for accountability of this criminal and toxic police department is dire. The only thing you all need to be discussing is how you can lack the courage to actually lead our city to say enough to the systemic racism that you are endorsing with your inaction. The police needs to be defunded and accountability needs to be sustained. The very minimum that we can have is this oath and have it be independent, transparent, and have investi investigative powers. There are so many people that spoke today about all of the injustices that continue to happen, and you are all aware of it, yet you are still doing absolutely nothing. So I want you to think about respect 
and think about actually respecting the many lives that have been lost at the hands of this police department and start actually giving a damn about our communities and the people you claim to represent. Thank you. Christopher is followed by April McHugh. Hello, um, I'm gonna uh, demand that council vote uh, no on this item. It is an insult to the public that overwhelmingly supported the creation of vote that defunding is even being considered. I understand clearly the motivation behind the three council members who brought forth this agenda item, and it is absolutely not for the betterment of our community, regardless of how they frame it. Without accountability, there is no democracy. Without accountability, there is no justice. Without accountability, there is no way to check government power, something that is essential for us to be free people. And these council members should know that being conservatives, but apparently they have, um, they, they don't believe it in this instance. Now, if council members want more funding for programs that will help the most vulnerable among us, like the unsheltered, they can take it from the Phoenix Police Department. You seem to think that it's okay to give Phoenix Police Department millions in overtime for officers to target protesters with false charges to abuse and attack protesters for no reason. And you even pay them to give false testimony to grand jury. That money can go to help the unsheltered. That money can go to help the most vulnerable among us. That money can go uplift our society, our community, our people. So I thank you for uh, everybody voting no on this item. Um, oat is the bare minimum. Doing the bare minimum should be a no brainer and we should be already discussing how to go beyond that. Thank you for your time. April is next followed by Samuel Merton. Hey, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Okay, great. Hello, city council, city manager and mayor. Um, I can't believe you're making space on your agenda today to defund police accountability but you won't hear us out to defund the police and reinvest in your community. Especially after this public exposure of the Phoenix Police Department, this is so problematic and violent, but I really don't want my message to get lost today because you have life affecting power um, in your hands and I'm urging you to use it. I'm asking you to demand Alistair Adele dismiss all protesting cases with prejudice. Do your job and publicly denounce these charges. Demand that the Maricopa County Attorney's Office adjust the motion to dismiss the October 17th cases to be with prejudice and pass a resolution to call on the Maricopa County's Attorney's Office to drop all charges, including July 18th, August 9th, October 3rd, and any other outlying charges with prejudice. Demand that municipal court dismiss all misdemeanor charges and demand our Maricopa County Attorney's Office hold the officers accountable who lied under oath and fire all the officers who have been involved with these cases. Fire all the prosecutors, especially April Sponsel and Nick Mashad, involved in the protest charges because they have acted with negligence with people's lives in their hands. With everything being aired in the media that Black and Brown folks have been telling us for years, the things the last thing we need is to take any level of accountability away from these police officers. The only people holding Phoenix PD accountable right now are the black and brown organizers and directly impacted people of your community. The people, excuse me, the police actually just received a big bonus for their falsely labeled riots and the money could easily come from our police budget. I'm asking you today, what is your power? I'd like an answer. Like what? Samuel will be followed by Lola. I am opposed to this item. You are putting two big issues up against each other that are kind of making it appear as though one has to be funded against the other. You know that the unsheltered in Phoenix desperately need help and you're manipulating that as part of a game to kill 
independent police oversight. We know that the budget can fully fund independent civilian oversight of the police and fully fund a homeless plan. We even just heard in I-27 that the homeless plan is getting $33 million. So why is this item even here? Councilmember Williams, Councilmember Waring, Councilmember Garcia, I hope you're still listening to these comments and it's really important because killing police accountability, you're also literally helping to kill unsheltered people. Did any of you see that video of a Phoenix police officer beating an unsheltered person? Did you forget about Muhammad Muhammad, whose life was taken by Phoenix police? He was unsheltered. With everything that's come to light about the police department, you have to know that the officers frequently target the homeless. If you approve this idea of transferring funds, you're saying you're okay with cops having no accountability and allowing them to continue to target the unsheltered. And if you actually did care about the unsheltered, you wouldn't be trying to do what you're doing right now. And do you, we know how you guys vote. We know what has happened in all the previous meetings. We haven't forgot. Like we know that you constantly vote to allow tens of thousands of dollars to be donated to the police department. And that the police department has the majority of money in the Phoenix budget. All while like you guys allow people to sleep in the dirt and live in tents literally down the street from the Phoenix headquarters. This is a disingenuous attempt Lola is next, followed by Karen. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Great. So I'm here today representing Mass Liberation Arizona and also as a lifelong District 7 and District 8 South Phoenix resident who's here today disgusted with you as a city council. You have been put on notice week after week, month after month, and somehow the thing that matters most to your constituents remains absent on these useless agendas. I heard your admonition at the beginning of this meeting. Don't tell me to be respectful when you don't respect me. You don't respect the people of this community who continue to plead with you to care about our lives. So I don't respect you. Respect is earned. You did not have mine. Let's make that clear. I oppose item 81 because there is no excuse that you would defund accountability before defunding the most violent police department in the nation. How dare you pitch shelter crisis that you caused by constantly failing to prioritize it did you forget what you just did with the low bar barrier shelter decision? Stop acting like this is a priority for you. You don't want to do anything but police unsheltered people in your city. You don't want to shelter them. Do you realize that we're voters? We are organizations that influence pol political outcomes. And do you really think that you can keep doing this and that you won't be held accountable for choosing white supremacy over justice? You need to fire your police chief. She's demonstrated time and time again that she's complicit with the murders, the racism, the lies that Phoenix PD is known for. But you also need to fire your city manager because he is the most culpable. Ed Zerker, we see you. You don't get to hide behind black people as a diversion, hiding your racist agenda by tokenizing black people like Milton Dahoney, Jeff Barton, and Jerry Williams so that you can deflect your own accountability. This is the oldest trick in the white supremacy playbook. You're basic, you don't fool us, You've had every opportunity to address this. So let me be clear. Today, we demand city council talk about these protest cases. Pass a resolution to demand MCO drop all of the charges. Make sure that your city prosecutor drops all of the municipal charges as well. And when we say drop, we say with prejudice. Disband your tactical response unit. Fire your chief and all the officers involved. Create a reparations fund for the victims that you've abused. Return the property that you stole from protesters. That means their cameras, their Karen is next, followed by Erica. Hi, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Um, hi, um, I ap apologies, I'm at work. So um, if I end up having to leave, um, that's why um, as I sit here and I reflect on February 25th, 2020 and thinking about being in that, that room and listening to four and a half hours of people that have had their lives impacted by police violence. And I sit here and I listen to these testimonies and I think of my community members. And I just wanted to ask, or, or perhaps maybe remind us all, what is accountability? It's an obligation or a willingness to accept responsibility for one's actions. Accountability does not mean punishment. 
what does it mean to be a transparent person? It means we are a person that cannot or does not hide or conceal anything. The unfortunate thing is, when I personally read this agenda item, I could feel the pain of the gaslighting and the silencing and the isolating that this count, these council members decided to do. We deserve better. We ask for better. We demand better. People that are unsheltered and people that are being constantly put in harm's way by police deserve better. And I hope that you will listen to these people. Thank you. I yield my time. Erica is next, followed by Patricia. Hi, hello. Hello. Hi, are you? Okay, so my name is Erica, and I just want to say that I'm pretty, I feel disrespected that you guys even would come up with this, this agenda item. Um, come on, I listened to the call two weeks ago. I listen to people vote down doing low barrier shelter beds. And all of a sudden we want, you know, we're trying to move forward with this office of accountability. And all of a sudden they want to divert uh, funds over to this other issue. And in my opinion, we're pitting two issues up that are very, very important up against each other, which again, I think is unfair. You're throwing crumbs our way and we're expected to be happy. So I'm going to say, no, I oppose uh, what you're trying to do. I want to know who the brain surgeon is who came up with this idea. But my brother was shot by the Phoenix PD. Yes, I know they're violent. Yes, I know they're racist. They shot him down. They try to kill him. He doesn't call it, I was shot by the cops. He says, I was, they tried to murder me that night because after they shot him, they beat him up. And then we had no, I mean, where we had nowhere to go. We, we still to this day don't have any answers to why he was shot. He still has bullets lodged inside of him and we're supposed to pretend like everything's okay. And then you want to throw these crumbs at us and act like, you know, we're supposed to be happy with it. No. So I'm going to say we want a real office of accountability. We want some real transparency. And if they don't got nothing to hide, I don't see what the problem is. So listen to what everybody's saying on these calls, call after call, month after month, and give us what we want. We want transparency. We want accountability. Patricia is next, followed by Luna. Thank you, City Council and Mayor Gallego. You're sitting here smiling and applauding yourselves and you have blood on your hand. You wanna be a body of government children can participate in Mayor Gallego, use respectful language. You are more offended by language than your police department killing people with impunity. Why don't you call them out for their harm and disrespect for human life? This is sick. I don't want any child to hear how vile and disrespectful you all are. You have no respect, no concern or regard for anyone except your fellow white supremacists. Chief Jerry Williams, you also have blood on your hands. The whole world knows how violent and sick Phoenix Police is, and we will continue to push this issue since you all support them until they are defunded. We know an independent investigation is not enough to remedy the depth of deceit of this department. Now you want to take away your sad, fake offer of quote-unquote accountability. We don't want the OAT budget to support the unsheltered people. We want the whole damn police budget, all $745 million of it a year, so we can support the entire community and create true safety. Police do not do that. They never have. They never will. So we're not going to take your cheap little O. We don't want your fake CRB. We don't want to rubber stamp PSB's quote unquote investigations. We want Phoenix police to stop killing and caging black people. Ed Zuricker, you have blood on your hands too. You said it is clear we have a deep rooted issue that must be addressed. And you are so right, Ed. Black and directly impacted leadership have the solutions that will solve these incessant problems. We are calling to defund Phoenix PD to terminate Ed Zuricker, to denounce all remaining protest charges, to fire all cops involved with the challenge coin and the political prosecutions, including Chief Jerry. Thank you. Luna will be followed by Jacob Rayford.
Mayor, it appears that Luna is no longer on the line. Uh, thank you. Uh, Jacob will be next, followed by Sean Severud. All right. Yes, my name is uh, Jacob Rayford, a lead organizer in the season spanning protests here in Phoenix. Now, we spent the better portion of 2020 not just protesting, but exposing the character and functionality of an archaic, uh, hate driven police system. And when they answered our calls for justice and accountability with further violence and political prosecution so egregious, there's an entire multi uh, part investigative report on a news agency that wants to view us as rioters. We persisted because at the end of the day, a bully is only as strong as the fear it enables. And clearly, we're not afraid. Clearly, we're organized. And clearly, we have time today. And what y'all are not about to do, warring, and especially you, South CCO, is use your false narratives about an innocent civil rights movement as means to defund attempts to hold these clearly unrestrained officers we employ accountable. Any personal relationships that you have with the Phoenix Police Department, any scratch my back understandings you have with plea are meaningless. As soon as you clock in for work, you don't just serve the constituents in the uh, district, uh, those you respect you, your actions affect the entire community. So you are a servant of the entire city, starting with the disenfranchised on up. And as you can see today, this entire community sees this as nothing more than a desperate attempt to hold a historic system of prejudice, to uphold it, I should say, um, that um, you and so many people like you benefit from. You're legitimately using the unsheltered community as a human shield for accountability. You, you, you have officers dressed like G.I. Joe, a fraction of that budget could fund both. And Zerker, you allowed Jerry Williams to mismanage a department to the effect that what, like nearly one in 30 officers are on the Brady list? You allowed the existence of a system that employs known white nationalists and assigns them to city civil rights protests about white nationalism? Lack of oversight allowed the continued abuse of the unsheltered community, the political prosecution of innocent protesters, and loss of countless lives. You care about the unsheltered community? To fund the police that predatorily targets them, three million is a drop in the bucket, especially compared to CARES. Sean is next, followed by Bailey. Mayor and members of council, um, <laughs> I just want to say uh, specifically to uh, Sal, Jim, and Zelda that I really don't appreciate you at all. Uh, I don't appreciate me having to take a day off of work or taking time off of work and being mildly inconvenienced um, to have to come in here and say something so straightforward that this is just obviously politically driven. And it's really sad because you know, y'all clearly don't care about the people that you're supposed to represent, and that's your job. That's your role um, in this. And I would say, you know, it's really ground for recall if y'all weren't on your way out basically already. And I, I thank God for that. I don't even believe in God, but I thank God for that. Um, now, to the larger extent, this is a um, police uh, organization in Phoenix um, where just the other day, you know, it came out that police officers were complaining about not being able to ga gas and stomp BLM protesters. It's a police force that has targeted the leaders of those protests. It's a police force where, you know, an officer uh, threatened to kill the mayor if she held them accountable. I mean, <laughs> there's no more clear message than that, that this is a needed office, obviously. Um, and, and really, it's the bare minimum. Like others have said, we need to really um, redirect funds from the police force itself. It's over 40% of the general fund being dedicated to the police. Okay, that's unacceptable. Uh, we need to address the root causes of homelessness, housing insecurity. Get it, let's get a decent minimum wage. Let's talk about mental health. Let's talk about things that will actually uh, take seriously um, what people deal with when they're unsheltered. Thank you. Bailey is next, followed by Jessica Spencer. Hello, I'm a D1 resident here to oppose this item and demand that you reserve the 3 million for the OAT as originally approved. I'm not here to dismiss the needs of the unsheltered community. I just don't think funding one must mean defunding the other. In fact, I think we need police oversight to protect the unsheltered community from documented police abuse against them. We deserve both homeless services and police oversight. 
First, I'd like to directly address Williams to CCO and Waring. We see through your thinly veiled attempt to kill the oat. Item 27 of this very agenda gave $33 million to homelessness. So why do you want to defund the oat for another 3 million? It's because this isn't about homelessness. It's about stopping police oversight, which you've been attempting for months. What's especially shameful is that you're using one of the most vulnerable populations in our city as a prop to enact your political whims. Also, to name these or to these same council members who use rhetoric about tight city budgets, please acknowledge how much the lack of police oversight costs taxpayers. You want to take three million away from OAT, yet you say nothing about the more than 39 million that unfit officers cost taxpayers in lawsuits alone between 2007 and 2020. Is that enormous sum not irresponsible government spending? Let's take a fraction of that amount and put it towards addressing police misconduct. We demand that our money goes into an office that will actually serve us, not into a department that continuously fails us. Now to all of you, police needs, uh, Phoenix needs the oat. This moment could not offer a more relevant example as to why. Earlier this month, the city had to call an independent investigation into neo-Nazi challenge coins, specifically because of a lack of accountability. You've proven that currently the city doesn't resolve or even acknowledge systemic issues in PD. But you can't deny that there are systemic issues. If there weren't, then racist propaganda wouldn't be a per pervasive problem. If there weren't, then we wouldn't see officers like Moore, Hare, Howell, Neville, Scott, Sika, and Bryce. Jessica is next, followed by Roshana. Good afternoon, City Council. My name is Jessica Spencer. I am a white home owner and Navy veteran, which I mentioned since you disregard black and brown voices. I am here today to support the demands on the citizens petition and oppose this motion. I don't understand why we're trying to balance money between accountability and the house list when we need to be doing both. While you bicker about 3 million that will not will not make a dent in our housing crisis and currently sits in an office that is mere lip service, there are still more than 20 residents that have charges sitting against them. These charges are absolutely bogus and were thrown on as a means to silence their rightful voices. And yet we sit here arguing about taking money away from the oversight committee. This is not what my family and I served our country for. We serve to uphold the rights of its people, not silence those we disagree with. This is not something I will quietly stand for. You must demand that the MCAO drop all charges and all political prosecutions and hold the officers that lied under oath accountable. I expect much better from those that are meant to serve the populace. I expect much better from all of you. Instead, it seems you want to rule in ways that serve your own interests as you will not listen to the people that you are supposed to represent. Drop the charges, do something, do your jobs and represent us. I yield the rest of my time. Roshana is next, followed by Brandon. Hello, Phoenix City Council. This is Roshana Striggles, a member of your community. I would first and foremost like to um, talk to uh, Councilwoman Thelda Williams, um, Sal Diasso, and Jim Waring. Um, Jim Waring, on your home page, you say that you've been tirelessly fighting for responsible government, but I highly doubt that you thought that this was responsible to put on the bill. Thelda Williams, seeing that your house has been paid off since 1971, I doubt that you have any experience or any relatability to homelessness, so I can see why you're on this item. Um, and as far as the rest of you guys, I can't believe that you didn't talk them out of this. But to prove my point, I think that you have more than enough money to solve this homelessness issue. And I also believe that if you do need that extra $3 million, you can take that out of the $542 million that you allotted for public safety. When you look at cases like Mohammed um, Muhammad Jr., who was murdered by your police department, I find it very disrespectful that you think that this is how to solve one issue or another. Phoenix is on our way to being the deadliest police force again in this country. And without OAT, I see that coming before the end of this year. Furthermore, the four causes of homelessness are affordable housing, unemployment, poverty, and mental illness, and the lack of mental illness services, all of which can be um, put on the fact that a lot of our population has single parent homes and rent has gone up 21% in the past three years. I think that we should focus our attention on solving those problems 
before we decide to defund oats. And if we are going to defund something to do with the police, we need to defund those patrol um, B cops and defund Officer Ben Moore, who gets paid over $130,000 a year, receiving a raise after 2017 when he killed Muhammad Amin. I think it's disrespectful. Uh, Brandon is next, followed by Heather Hamill. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Hi, my name is Brandon Valentine. I'm one of the protesters um, that was arrested in regards to the August 9th protest. Um, City Council and Mayor Gallego, you need to do your jobs. You need to publicly denounce the charges and demand that Maricopa County Attorney's Office adjust the motion to dismiss the 1017 cases to be with prejudice. Um, Alice Adele needs to go, Sal DiCiccio needs to go, Lieutenant Ben Moore needs to go yesterday and the year before. Every single one of these officers that are involved with the challenge coin need to go. They do not need to be put on non-enforcement duties. How many officers are on enforcement duties right now that knew about this coin that just didn't partake in it on paper, quote unquote? How many of them knew? They all need to go. Phoenix PD needs to be defunded immediately. This is a, a gross abuse of power by all of our elected officials and will all be voted out eventually. Thank you, I yield my time. Heather is next, followed by Marcus Reed. Um, hi, my name is Heather Hamill. I'm a civil rights attorney um, here in the Valley. I work for a group called the People's Law Firm. Um, the first thing that I wanted to point out is I wanted to echo the sentiments that many before me said, which is we have come before this council month after month, um, week after week, month after month, year after year. Um, and we've been putting these issues before the council with no changes to how policing is done in this city. Um, our office in particular has been bringing claims before the city of Phoenix for years now regarding the police department's pattern of politically prosecuting activists and civil rights leaders. We put this city on notice in 2019 of this office's activities, of this department's activities. The ACLU put this city on notice in 2017. Since then, our office has sent, I think in this past year, over eight notice of claims representing over 40 people who have been abused by this apartment at protests and who have been falsely and maliciously and illegally prosecuted by this department. Those notice of claims have been directed at every single council member and the mayor. You have known about this for years, for years. And so the statements that are being given to the press right now about how this is all of a sudden a surprise um, is incredibly disheartening given all of the information that's been put before you, not just by our office, but by this community. At every single council meeting, this has been a major issue. Marcus is next, followed by Harper. One moment, Mayor. Mayor, it appears that Marcus is no longer on the line. Thank you. Harper will be next, followed by Chris Sanchez. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Okay, I just want to say that this is a disappointing and unacceptable attempt to pit police accountability against the housing crisis in Phoenix. In fact, if you truly care about people without shelter like you claim to, you would understand that Phoenix police regularly antagonizes homeless people, which is just another reason that there needs to be an office for police accountability in the first place. Instead of taking away funding from the O, take funding away from the anti-Black neo-Nazi coin-swapping Phoenix Police Department. 
listen to the voices of the people on the ground working with homeless folks, and listen to the people, especially black and brown folks, who have been directly affected by the police and oppose this agenda item. I yield my time. Uh, Chris is next, followed by Calixta. Can you hear me? I can hear me? Yes, yes we can. Uh, my name is Chris. Uh, I'm a father and a professional in the tech industry. I'm also one of the protesters that was brutalized and arrested on 1017. Uh, I'd just like to thank uh, every member of the community that's called in so far and those that continue to call in for voicing their opinions about the Phoenix Police Department and the Maricopa County Prosecutor. I can't thank you all enough, and please do not let up the pressure. I also wanna echo what everyone else in the community has been saying. Uh, while I believe the houseless population needs all of the assistance possible, um, 81 makes absolutely no sense. Uh, accountability is also a necessity. Uh, the charges against protesters are nothing but political, uh, evidenced by everything ABC 15 has released in their reports. And I cannot believe that the city is willing to ruin people's lives. Uh, all the charges against all the protesters need to be dismissed with prejudice. We are demanding accountability for the actions of the Phoenix, Phoenix Police Department and the prosecutor, Alistair Adele, uh, Ben Moore, and all of the racist neo-Nazi cops being harbored by the Phoenix Police Department need to be fired. Vote no on 81. Uh, Black Lives Matter. I yield the rest of my time. Calixta is followed by Ronnie. Hi, can you hear me? Hello? Yes, we can. Okay, perfect. Hi, uh, my name is Cal. I'm a lifelong resident of Phoenix and I was arrested on 1017 in stop just gang charges. Um, first of all, I just wanna say, Sal DeCicio, you are so disgusting to me. It doesn't surprise me that you're using the homeless as a front to prevent accountability of neo-Nazi cops. That's not surprising. Um, speaking of neo-Nazis, we want our property back. It's insane that I can be looking at an evidence picture of my belongings, and yet this morning I was told that my things had already been picked up. Um, we want these charges dropped with prejudice, and we want Doug McBride and Ben Moore and Alistair Adele fired. And we demand more than an independent investigation. We want accountability. We want all charges over the summer dropped. And I also want to add that it's insulting to our homeless community to try to pull off this stunt. But maybe if Sal DeCicio wasn't fighting with community members on Twitter, he would have come up with a better one. Um, that's it. Um, Ronnie will be next, followed by Jisoo. Hello, we can hear you. Okay. Hi, on February 25th last year, we voted to take steps towards accountability and transparency. I don't know why we're here. Did you intentionally not mean to keep your promise to your constituents? Um, as of today, we have seen no progress towards true transparency. City Council and Mayor, it is public knowledge that the Tactical Response Unit, TRU, are violent neo-Nazis who celebrate their violence against protesters. Your constituents are outraged, yet not a single one of you has publicly denounced Phoenix PD besides Council Member Garcia for their horrific mistreatment of protesters. How is it you care so little about what is happening? These are your constituents. These are the people who elected you to office. This is who you are working for. We demand you call for an immediate investigation of the tactical response unit's racial bias. We demand all officers involved with protest abuse be fired. We demand these charges be dropped with prejudice. Council and mayor, none of you, the nation is watching and right now you are all on the wrong side of history. Fire all the officers involved with the neo-Nazi coin, including Lieutenant Ben Moore, George Herr, Jeffrey Howell, Glenn Neville, Jay Scott, John Sticka, Burry Bryce, fire all other officers not currently named that help sell, share, create, share, or keep this disgusting coin that celebrates PPD's neo-Nazi culture. Fire Jerry Williams that protects 
for Phoenix PD police officers and will fight to keep transparency from the public. I yield the rest of my time. Uh, we are moving through speakers quickly, so I'm going to go straight after speakers into council member comments uh, without a break. Uh, Jisoo will be followed by Hannah. Hello. First of all, I support the citizens petition that community members and directly impacted people are demanding. Second of all, I have to hand it to council members who so openly display their hatred for the poor while hiding behind flowery language and megawatt smiles while sitting in their big mansions. Must be nice. I'm a humble renter without dental insurance. So let's pretend they actually want to address the needs of one of Phoenix's most vulnerable populations. Well, then they should consider that ending houselessness inherently requires ending the terror that PPD inflicts upon our unsheltered population daily. It's funny because at first they tried to give us a trash oat, one without community involvement or independent investigations. So I say fund the human service campus, def defund PPD, give us an accountable oat and vote no on this item. I'm finished speaking. Bye. Thank you. Hannah is next. I am here today to support the demands on the citizens petition and oppose this violent item. Our gloriously incompetent Mayor Kate and the rest of the anti-Black white supremacist ableist city council are yet again focusing on rules and procedure at the expense of our communities. Black leadership is demanding for years true police accountability and transparency, but last year the city manager gave us the joke of a policy that is OCRB, a totally toothless proposal that would have let cops rubber stamp the violence of their murderous cop buddies and make white supremacist challenge coins to glorify their brutality. You're sitting here again declaring your allegiance to white supremacy by burning the corpse of your wholly inadequate policy, all while the most violent police force in the nation, PPD, sits on 750 million of our dollars. Imagine what would be possible if we used that $750 million for something other than anti-Black white supremacist violence. We could offer every single person experiencing homelessness permanent housing and still have money left over to invest in our communities. If our mayor and council truly cared about our communities, you would demand MCAO immediately drop all protest charges with prejudice. You would fire all of the neo-Nazi cops who knew about this challenge coin and those who lied under oath to pursue false charges, including chokehold Jerry Williams. You would fire city manager Ed Zerker, we see you Ed, who oversees the most violent police in the nation and refuses to hold them accountable. Black leaders in the community wrote a policy for a truly independent investigative vote and Ed's office threw it out to protect your violent police. You must work with community to write a truly independent and fully investigative oath like you promised. None of you deserve to be considered leaders. Change your hearts and finally listen to our communities on your way out the door. On your way out, demand all protest charges be dropped with prejudice and give us a truly independent and investigative oath created by and for our communities instead of the trash you tried to pass last year. And maybe, just maybe, history won't look quite so harshly on you for your violence, but probably not, we'll still hate you. You are all complicit in anti-Black white supremacist violence through the policies you enact and by overseeing the most violent police force in the nation without holding them accountable by defunding and abolishing them. We don't need violent neo-Nazi cops to be reorganized. We need them abolished. Thank you. Um, for our staff, have I missed any members of the public wishing to comment? Mayor, you have not missed anyone. Everyone that has signed up to speak has spoken so far. Wonderful, Councilwoman Gordado. Thank you, Thank you Mayor. Um, at, at this moment, I just wanted to say that I will continue supporting the need for community participation and oversight in our processes. I think we have resources and ability to both fund our Office of Accountability and Transparency and fulfill our commitment to addressing the homelessness crisis. I will give further comments um, after, we, after we take the vote, but at this moment, I would like to make a motion to deny item 81 as presented on the 3% memo. I'm sorry, a secondary motion to deny item 81 as presented on the 3% memo. Thank you for your substitute motion. Council Member yeah. Garcia. Thank you, Mayor. I wanted to second that. Um, and then just uh, make some comments, is that okay? Yes, please do so. Thank you. Thank you. For, for, <clears throat> for my colleagues that put, put this forward, um, I think you thought you were being clever by 
by thinking, you know, you you found a way to finally kill Oak. And for a couple of you in particular that have been around since the 90s, when, when community folks first came to try to get an Office of Accountability or some sort of civilian review board, you've been dealing with or evading it or actually fighting it for the last 30 years. I, I don't know what caused you or why, why you thought this was the opportune time to do it, but it shows something that I've realized in the last year and a half that I've been here is, is there's a tone deafness and there's an inability for you to understand what people of color and people that live in districts that aren't like yours go through every day and what our relationship looks like with, with the police. Um, and I hope you reflect on that. And I hope, you know, after 30 years, I don't expect you to, to change, but I would hope you'd at least understand it. Someone mentioned Muhammad today, and, and that's who I thought about as soon as you all turned in this memo. Muhammad needed both. Muhammad needed services, a place to live, support systems, mental health, a place for his pet. He needed officers to not think that it was okay to kneel on his neck and hold him down until his last breath. Muhammad is gone now. And Muhammad's family and the rest of us and the people in his community deserve justice and deserve to learn through the things that were done wrong while murdering him. Muhammad's life was lost, but what can be gained from it is policies, is guidelines, is rethinking the way we fund our city services. What could we have done different for Muhammad instead of murdering him? Can we at least learn from the loss of life? Can we do what many said today which is the bare minimum, and I agree with a lot of folks, because an O and CRB process I've been asked for since the 90s. Can we do the bare minimum, which is ass assess and shift policies and hold officers accountable, specifically when lives are lost or when people like Erica Reynolds are sexually assaulted by our officers? or when unsheltered people are treated like someone we saw two weeks ago in an alley? Can we at least have a process in the city that allows us to study these situations and shift things and change things so they don't continue to happen over and over again? We need that oak and civilian review board at the minimum. And until we have that, and some of my colleagues decided not to allow us to move forward with that, we also need to take action ourselves. We need to demand that these charges are, are dropped for the 20 folks that are left over without, with prejudice. We need to apologize to some of the folks that came on the phone today because we had officers from our police department literally on the stand lie and make things up and possibly ruin their lives. We need CRD unit to be investigated. We need to do a whole lot of things. And obviously I don't think what we need to do today is defund accountability. So I hope we could reflect on the conversation that was had today. I wanna to thank everyone who spoke. Some of y'all I know are going through a lot of things and it takes a lot of work as a former community organizer to hold the conversations, the relationship to the people being impacted by these issues. Some of y'all are going through medical situations in the midst of a pandemic. From the bottom of my heart, I wanna thank all of you for spending the time today to relay the importance of this issue. And I hope my colleagues would listen to you. Um, I'm seconding and supporting uh, Councilwoman Guardado's motion um, to deny this moving forward. Thank you. Mayor. Councilman DeCicio. Thank you, Mayor. So I don't think anybody's tone deaf. I think everyone heard exactly 
what the public and the individuals that were here today and what the OAT is really about. You heard them say, this is about defunding the police. That's what this is about. People like accountability and the public loves transparency. We love those things, but that's not what we're debating today. That's not what we're discussing today. Supporting the OAT is set up for a failure. It's literally set up to make our police department look bad in every situation, making sure that they don't even act anymore, and then you're gonna end up having criminals running through our streets of the city of Phoenix. You're gonna make the public unsafe if we do not pass this today. We have got to pass this. This is critical. This defends our police officers, it defends our public, and makes sure that what we are doing today, we create stability in our city. You've got individuals, and it's a very, very small group of individuals that are out there to destroy our city, destroy the city of Phoenix, take apart our police department. We heard those people, not just today, but repeatedly. So that's what this is about, defunding the police and creating a situation where the police officers look bad in every situation and by doing that, then there's a movement to defund the police because then the public will say, well, gosh, they're really horrible people. Maybe they are that bad, when in fact they're not. They're hardworking uh, citizens of the city of Phoenix. They're hard workers, their families are. Their families have been attacked throughout this. I've heard police officers talk about how their sons and daughters in schools are treated and mistreated. We don't talk about that, do we? All of a sudden, the police officers are the bad guys in the city. That's never happened before. It just happened in the last year, year and a half, by a small group of individuals who are constantly on the attack. That's what's occurring. There's no tone deafness here. I think everybody heard loud and clear. The vote today, we're either going to defend our police officers and defend the actions that they do and realize that they are good people. They're good, hardworking families. They volunteer at the churches, they volunteer at the games. They do a lot of stuff for our city outside of this. So we're either going to defend them or we're go and defend our public, or we're going to uh, agree with these individuals that have been here repeatedly talking about how our police officers are murderers, they're rapists, and they're the worst thing on this planet. That's really what this vote is about today, Mayor. So from my end of it, I'm going to be supporting the first motion that Felder Williams put together and hope that the rest of the council comes along with that. Thank you, Mayor. Mayor. A councilwoman. Thank you. Now, this is really a tough one for me. Um, I know we have some issues in our police department, and I know we're trying to take a look at those, but I really do believe our police have one of the toughest and most demanding jobs in the city. I know I wouldn't want their job. I've had an opportunity over the last four years to get to really appreciate what our officers do. I regularly attend a copy with a cop in the two precincts that are in my district, and I can see the officers enjoy their job. They love what they do. They want to serve the public. I think that's critical but they continue to get beat up at these meetings and it just troubles me because I know our officers are good people. Our chief is a good person. I take offense when people say she should be fired. She's got a tough job, she does a great job and I support her. But I know the issue is there is some question as to accountability. Now, I would like to look at other options on the table that we've talked about in the past with regards to um, police accountability, such as the ombudsman's program. I would like to see, um, Councilman Garcia, that you do sit down with our police officers and talk to them as well. It, there are two sides to every story, and I appreciate what you talk about and what you've gone through and what you've seen but I know our officers to be good people. So I hope you would be willing to at least have that conversation. I would love to be a part of that conversation. I have a lot of respect for our officers, but I know that we do need some form of accountability. And um, to that end, I think I will um, support the substitute motion. Thank you. Thank you. Mayor. Councilwoman. 
Thank you. I want to point out that my motion did not kill the accountability or transparency. It is simply recommending that we move the money that cannot be spent that's allocated in this year's budget to address some of the problems. It, I have repeatedly heard from CAS that they don't have the funding to provide the mental health services that we need, some of the addiction problems. And this money would simply help them get that into effect immediately. I think it's very important that I, I have, I don't support the OAT committee. I do think that Councilwoman Deborah Stark has a good recommendation. I think there needs to be accountability. I am abhorred at what I've heard on the news. I know most of these police officers are great people. They sincerely believe in what they do in trying to protect the community. They are not out to harm people. And even though I have been on the council 30 years, Mr. Garcia, I am very supportive of public safety, not only the officers, but the service they provide to the community. I think it is important to respect their difficult position and recognize that the part of my motion was to continue to redevelop and retrain from officers so that we change attitudes and practices. And I think the chief of police and Ed Zucker have been doing a very good job trying to continue along this effect. But I think it's time to bring in some additional outside help and this motion provided the money to do that. So I stick with my original motion. Thank you. Thank you. Roll call. Decisio. Uh, just a quick explanation. I mean, the, the, the first motion, that this is the substitute motion, correct? Yes, Councilman. Okay, so the first motion was only for one year. I can't imagine anyone voting against that because that vote was killed. So my, my vote's gonna be no on the substitute and yes on the Felda Williams motion. Garcia. No. Yes. Guardado. Yes. Nowakowski. Nowakowski. Yes. Thank you. Pastor. Yes. Dark. Yes. Waring. No. Williams. Williams. No. Gallego. Yes. The substitute motion passes 6-3. By a vote of 6-3, to three, the City Council has voted in support of the Office of Accountability and Transparency and against the three-person memo. I think this is an important step towards a safer city. To me, oversight and accountability does contribute to a safer city. We want to build trust with our community and we want all of our residents to feel that our justice system is working as best as it's possible. OAT is one of many steps that we are working on and comes with a comprehensive view that includes many investments, including those we made in homelessness. With today's council meeting, we have invested more than $100 million in fighting homelessness and investing in affordable housing just in the last 365 days. This council is committed to fighting homelessness and building a better Phoenix. And I think this is an important vote today. I believe Councilwoman Guardado, you wanted to make additional comments, so I will turn to you next. No, th thank you for that, Mayor. No, I am good, thank you. All right, uh, thank you so much. Then that include, uh, concludes our agendized business today and we will go to comments from the public. I will turn to our city attorney to introduce this portion of the council meeting agenda. Thank you, Mayor. During citizen comment, members of the public may address the city council for up to three minutes on issues of interest or concern to them. 
The Arizona Open Meeting Law permits the City Council to listen to the comments, but prohibits Council members from discussing or acting on the matters presented. Thank you so much. Uh, we will begin this portion of our meeting with Katie Gibson McLean. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Pursuant to Chapter 4, Section 22 of the Phoenix Ch City Charter, I, Katie Gibson, a resident and citizen of the City of Phoenix, petitioned the City Council to immediately return all personal property to protesters illegally arrested by the Phoenix Police Department. And I'm referring to any and all protesters who were arrested this past summer. Additionally, we heard um, testimony from several directly impacted folks who were arrested this past summer and some of whom have now had their cases dismissed who can still not get their personal property back from the City of Phoenix Police Department. I personally have called Detective Adam Legier several times to no avail. He's failed to call me back. My client, Ryder Collins, has thousands of dollars of camera equipment who, that is still in the Prop, or the possession of the Phoenix Police Department that has not been returned. And I would think three conservative members of this council would be interested in knowing that, um, considering that uh, civil asset forfeiture and other types of property seizures are very important issues to folks who are sharing libertarian and conservative views. And so I think that this is an idea and an issue that everyone on the council can get behind, that property should not be seized permanently and that it should be quickly um, given back to folks who have been um, illegally arrested by the City of Phoenix Police Department. And so I'm, I've am i submitted this petition in writing. I've also announced it here, and I will be at any follow-up meetings if this is sent to a committee to continue to push this, because I believe that property should be returned quickly as, um, as, as soon as it can be, and that folks should return calls, especially regarding these things. So thank you. Thank you. Tina Luna will be next, followed by Shanisa Rowland. Anyway, well, I think I'll probably make my 7.30. <laughs> uh, Tina, I am unable to hear you. Do, do we have Tina? Mayor, it appears that Tina's audio is not working at this time. Councilwoman Stark, could you please mute your line as well? Mayor Tina is not on the line. Oh, okay, let's go to Shanisa, followed by Benjamin Lewis. Hello, so I am a resident of Phoenix, um, and I don't want to say greetings because I don't really want to greet you all. Um, whereas the Phoenix Police Department under the le leadership of Chief Jerry Williams has engaged in a widespread practice of politically motivated surveillance, violence, and arrest of social justice activists. And whereas in August 2017, the Phoenix Police Department Tactical Response Unit engaged in mass civil rights violations against attendees of an anti-Trump rally that resulted in numerous serious injuries and the violent suppression of thousands of individuals' free speech rights. And whereas the Phoenix Police Department's tact tactical response unit is responsible for creating, keeping, and sharing neo-Nazi inspired talent coins to commemorate and celebrate police violence against Phoenix residents expressing their First Amendment rights at the anti-Trump rally. And whereas Sergeant, uh, uh, Sergeant Doug McBride oversees and manages the tactical response unit. Whereas the United States District Court records indicate that Chief Jerry Williams and Phoenix Police Command uh, staff has known about the Nazi inspired challenge coin since at least August 2019 when she was dis deposed under the oath as part of the 2017 anti Trump rally civil rights lawsuit. Whereas the Phoenix City Council failed to act to hold Chair Chief Jerry Williams and Phoenix Police Department Tactical Response Unit accountable for physical harm and civil rights violations in 2017, thereby committing such un unconstitutional conduct to continue unchecked. 
Whereas Phoenix police officers engaged in the political prosecution of Black Lives Matter organizer Jamar Williams in 2019 by lying in police reports, forms submitted to the court and under oath about Mr. Williams purportedly assaulting two police Phoenix police officers. And whereas the Maricopa County Superior Court dismissed the criminal case against Jamar Williams for a lack of probable cause. Whereas Chief Jerry Williams lied to Phoenix City Council about the evidence that existed to successfully prosecute Jamar Williams, and whereas Phoenix City Council did not hold the officers who lied to prosecute a political opponent accountable for their unconstitutional activities, whereas Phoenix City Council in instead retaliated against Jamar Williams and removed him from his committee assignments related to police reform in the city of Phoenix. And whereas City of Phoenix Council's continued failure to hold Chief Jerry Williams and the Poli Phoenix Police Department accountable for mistreatment of protesters and political opponents resulted in continued harm. Whereas Phoenix police officers used unconstitutional and excessive force, including tear gas, pepper spray, rubber bullets, and beanbag rounds against nonviolent protesters on May 28, 2020, and May 31st, 2020. And whereas this use of force was particularly dangerous during a deadly pandemic spreading through the expulsion of respiratory droplets because tear gas and pepper spray caused individuals to expel respiratory droplets by coughing and sneezing. And whereas Phoenix police officers illegally arrested 354 individuals protesting the murders of Judge Floyd and Deion Johnson between May 28th and May 30th. Benjamin Lewis will be next, followed by Will Knight. Hi, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Thank you. Um, I first of all want to say that I support all nine demands of the citizens petition. I think those are uh, clear, actionable moves that Phoenix City Council can take to um, listen to the community. Um, this body has a short memory. Uh, from my first comment, we've been crying out saying that we don't trust the police. We are here in mass because Phoenix PD is killing our black and brown neighbors at an alarming rate, and no one is being held accountable. If we were in the council chambers today, we would be standing shoulder to shoulder. You would hear us mumbling in agreement. 130 people commented no on that item. A lot of us are sitting here um, today still three hours in because we want to see our police force held accountable. Sal. We're here protesting the taxpayer funded criminals running through our streets. We pay them to do that. This is what we know. We know that one in 30 Phoenix cops are known perjurers. It may be more because unfortunately, uh, MCAO colludes with the Phoenix police and MCAO is also responsible for placing officers on the Brady list. So we know that at least one in 30 are known perjurers. We know that in Phoenix, if you threaten the mayor, you keep your pension. We know that in Phoenix, there is no consequence for celebrating community harm with a, a physical token. We know that in the Phoenix PD, there are no consequences for celebrating neo-Nazi slogans in a physical, physical token. Uh, we know that Jerry knew about this 30 months ago, so there are no consequences for there not being consequences. And so every time that we spend money on the police department, what we are saying to racist, neo-Nazi, um, perjuring cops all over the country is that Phoenix is a home for you. We are now actively recruiting these people to come into our communities by not addressing this issue. Um, as many people have said, this is now national news. If we don't act right now, we're inviting th this onto ourselves. We, we, have to, we have to do something. We're pleading with you to do anything. And the nine demands that we're pleading for you to do are immediate, actionable, and to be very clear, just the start. I yield the rest of my time. Will Knight will be next, followed by Derek Begay. Thank you, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Thank you, good evening, mayor, council members. Uh, my name is Will Knight. I'm a directly impacted Latino immigrant. I'm a resident of District 7. I'm a local attorney, and for a change of pace, I'm here before you with a softball. I also filed a very simple citizen's petition with the city clerk this week. I won't read it in full. I'd prefer to summarize it and ask you to place it on the public agenda 
for your meeting and vote on it in 15 days or so so the public can see it for themselves. To summarize this really simple petition, it's very uncontroversial. All it asks for you to do is to establish enforceable guidelines for meaningful discipline that can be used to prevent police from using false information in reports or under oath in order to target protesters. And it should be adopted unanimously for three reasons. First, the public record is undeniable. For years, a cabal of Phoenix officers have targeted protesters with violence. They've celebrated their brutality with fascist hate symbols. They falsified reports and testimony under oath. And they did all of that with deliberate purpose of suppressing political activity, protected activity. Second, during that same period of police misconduct, this council debated whether we need additional accountability measures for that exact kind of misconduct. And third and most importantly, throughout that period and that debate, opponents of increased oversight consistently argued that our system is already sufficient. So for the sake of this petition, let's just assume that everyone uh, Councilman DeCicio, that you just assured us, loves transparency, all of you, the unions, Manager Zurcher, Chief Williams, everyone who takes this position. Let's assume you're right. Let's assume the Professional Standards Bureau, Use of Force and Disciplinary Review Boards, the Civil Service Board. Let's assume these are adequate mechanisms to hold bad cops accountable. Well, that assumption is kind of hard to reconcile right now, given the undeniable misconduct that all of us see under a spotlight right now. Misconduct that was reported, investigated, and never remedied until that spotlight was shined on it. Personally, I know that our system was designed to allow this, but if our system is sufficient, as so many of you consistently argue and believe, then the only explanation for that system's failure in this moment is that you haven't provided that system with clear, enforceable guidelines about meaningful disciplinary measures that can prevent cops from targeting the people advocating for black lives. That's what my petition asks you to do. And that's why I expect it to be unanimously adopted. Thank you. Thank you, Derek is next followed by Phyllis Tyson. Can you all hear me? Yes, we can. Excellent. Um, hello, everyone. My name is Derek Begay. Um, and pursuant to Chapter 4, Section 22 of the Phoenix City Charter, I, Derek Begay, a citizen and resident of the City of Phoenix, hereby petition the City Council to create a reparations fund for all individuals directly impacted by the Phoenix Police Department's use of excessive force at protests. I don't need my full three minutes for this, but I'd like to give you some background uh, information as to why I'm submitting this petition. Whereas Phoenix police officers used unconstitutional and excessive force, including tear gas, pepper spray, rubber bullets, and bee bag rounds against nonviolent protesters on May 28th through May 31st, 2020, and whereas this use of force was particularly dangerous during a deadly pandemic spread through the expulsion of respiratory droplets because tear gas and pepper spray cause individuals to expel respiratory droplets by coughing and sneezing. And whereas Phoenix police officers illegally arrested 354 individuals protesting the murders of George Floyd and Deanna Johnson between May 28th and May 31st, 2020. And whereas many of these arrests were secured using illegal cut and paste probable cause statements, and whereas many of these cases were dismissed for lack of probable cause. And whereas Phoenix City Council refused to hold the officers and command staff involved in the current pace operation responsible. And whereas Chief Jerry Williams and Phoenix Police Command staff allowed tactical response unit officers to be trained and coached by the Maricopa County Attorney's First Responders Bureau. And whereas after the training by MCIO, Maricopa Superior Court records show officers within the tactical response unit made numerous false arrests and lies in police reports, phone calls, and under oath about crimes allegedly committed by individuals protesting police violence in order to punish Black Lives Matter protesters. Whereas tactical, tactical response unit Sergeant Doug McBride offered false and misleading testimony to a grand jury about a fictional gang, ACAP, in order to punish Black, Life, Black Lives Matter protesters. 
And whereas Chief Jerry Williams has engaged in a pattern of misrepresenting her knowledge on the department's tactic and pattern of engaging in political prosecutions, whereas Chief Jerry Williams misrepresented her knowledge of the neo Nazi inspired coin to the residents of Phoenix, similar to the way in which she claimed to be unaware of promoting the tattoos among officers while chief of police in Oxnard, California. And whereas the Maricopa County Attorney's Office dismissed 15 protest cases in the interest of justice, and whereas the remaining cases against protesters suffer from the same lack of evidence, evidence of police bias and misconduct, whereas the Phoenix City Council failed to pass and fund meaningful independent investigatory civil oversight of the Phoenix Police Department. I'd also like to add the, the gentleman, the council member down at the bottom right hand of my screen, feels the need to constantly shift appropriate. Phyllis is next, followed by Heather. In pursuit to Chapter 4, Section 22 of the Phoenix of the Phoenix City Charter, I, Phyllis Tyson, a citizen and resident of City of Phoenix, hereby petition the City Council to create a reparations fund for all individuals directly impacted by the Phoenix Phoenix Police Department's practice and politically and falsely persecutions of prosecutors, of protesters. I don't really feel a need to introduce um, our engage with you guys part of my issue and i probably won't even use all of the three minutes a lot of my issue is some of the same things that everyone else is pointing out the fact that we have a phoenix police tactical response unit that's engaging in mass and civil violations against attendees at anti-trump rallies that are resulting in numerous and serious um serious injuries that violate and suppress thousands of individuals voices of the freedom speech rights the idea that we have um, Sergeant, Sergeant McBride who oversees and manages the tactical unit, whereas in the United States um, District Court records indicate that Chief Jerry Williams and the Phoenix Police um, has commanded staff who has known about Nazi-inspired challenge coins since August of 2019, where she then was deposed under oath as part of the 2017 anti-Trump civil rights lawsuit. Also, the Phoenix City Council filed, failed to act and hold her accountable. So to hold Chief Jerry Williams in the Phoenix Police Department Tactical Response Unit accountable for physical harm and civil rights violations in 2019, thereby permitting such unconstitutional conduct to go un to continue to go unchecked. Then Phoenix police officers engaged in a political prosecution against Black Lives Matter. Black Lives Matter organization Jamar, organizer Jamar Williams in 2019 by lying in police reports, form four submitted to the court and under oath about Williams perpetually assaulting two police officers. And later on, the, Fien the Maricopa County Superior Court dismissed the civil case against Jamar Williams as a lack of probable cause. We have Chief Jerry Williams who lied to the police, the Phoenix City Council about evidence that existed to successfully prosecute Jamar Williams and the city, the Phoenix City Council did not hold the officers who lied to prosecute a political opponent accountable for their unconstitutional activities. Phoenix Police City Council instead retaliated against Jamar Williams and removed him from his committee assignments related to the police reform in the city of Phoenix. Phoenix City Council's continued to fail, continued failure to hold Chief Jerry Williams and the Phoenix Police Department accountable for mistreat of protesters and political opponents, um, resulting in causing continuing harm. The police, police, Phoenix Police Department used unconstitutional. Heather is next, followed by Angela. Hi, um, my name is Heather Hamill. Um, I submitted a citizen's petition to the city clerk prior to this meeting. I'm here to present this petition to the council. I will not read the whole petition because I do not have the time, but the council has the whole petition and I hope they include it in the agenda um, of the council meeting where it's decided upon. So pursuant to chapter four, section 22 of the Phoenix City Charter, I, Heather Hamill, a citizen and resident of the city of Phoenix, 
hereby petition the Phoenix City Council to launch an ethics investigation independent of the Phoenix Police Department and the Maricopa County Attorney's Office into the policies and practices of the Tactical Response Unit and the corresponding failure of the leadership of Chief Jerry Williams and the Phoenix Police Command staff with respect um, to the aforementioned protests and events. The aforementioned protests and events are the response to the anti-Trump rally in 2017, um, the protest where Jamar Williams was arrested in 2019, and all of the protests that and events that have occurred um, during the protests in response to the murders of Dion Johnson and George Floyd that occurred between the months of May and November of 2020. Um, again, all of the protests and events that I'm referring to are listed in the petition that I submitted to the City of Phoenix clerk prior to this meeting. Um, and with that, I yield my time. Angelis will be followed by Patricia. Hi, thank you. This is Dr. Maldonado um, with Ibarra Maldonado Law Group. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Okay, so I also submitted a citizen's petition. Uh, my petition has been received by the city clerks um, and they have the entire document. And um, my petition specifically focuses on a request to disband the tactical response unit. Um, so I, Dr. Angeles Maldonado, a citizen and, re and resident of the city of Phoenix, hereby petition the city council to disband the tactical response unit. I did want to take some time to um, first of all, uh, acknowledge and thank you, uh, Councilman Carlos Garcia, for bringing us back to why many of us are sitting here um, through this entire meeting. And it's because we are all here, um, a lot of us are here in defense of Black lives. Um, we are incredibly sickened at the idea that, you know, Black people continue to be killed by Phoenix police. Black mothers are still mourning their children. Black women are still worried and having conversations with their children about policing. And I did wanna address uh, Councilman DeCicio's comments as well, uh, when he speaks about, you know, how maybe we are gonna make police officers look bad. Let me make it clear that the police is doing that all on their own. They don't need any support from any of us. They look bad all on their own. And also when we talk about this whole rhetoric of good people. Let's remember that it really has nothing to do with good or great people, whether the police are good people or not, it's absolutely irrelevant. This is about power. And this is about what the city council is allowing the Phoenix police to have power over. And they do not have power over our communities. They do not have power over our families. They do not have power to kill. And because of that, we are asking you to hold them accountable. To hold them accountable because they are killing our communities, because they are lying on the stand, they, because they are illegally arresting people who have a conscience. They have arrested 354 people protesting the murder of George Floyd. But we don't wanna talk about that. We don't wanna remember Deion Johnson and James Garcia and all of the different people that we know were victims of this department. Not to mention the, the proof that has came out of the fact that there's systemic racism in this department. So that's, that's what I wanna bring to the table. This is about power. This is about saying enough. This is about holding this police department accountable and stop simplifying the ways in which you criminalize and murder our family. Patricia is next, followed by Rebecca Denise. Hi there, thank you. I just want to state that Nissa Rowland was cut off earlier. She was reading her citizens petition and the demand is that Chief Jerry Williams be terminated for all of her misconduct and the way she overlooks the murders and violent protest response of her neo-Nazi police force. 
Um, Deb, I'm really sorry that your little feelings are hurt here. You're offended that we're calling out Phoenix Police Department. It must be really nice to be a white lady living in Phoenix and not have to fear for your life every single day. It is so offensive and disturbing to see council people and mayors sitting here and allowing all of this to happen without speaking out against Phoenix Police Department and in fact applauding them for being wonderful, hardworking, contributing citizens. They are murdering people and it is not okay and we will not let this continue to happen. We came together in 2019 and 2020 to fight against all of you so that we could create some type of accountability for the police. We knew something had to be done and still here we are. Your offer of Model A was trash. It was a cheap token, much like these neo-Nazi challenge coins and Model B is just as useless. So today, community members are here to demand that you, city council and mayor, stop creating new measures to avoid police accountability and instead take action against Phoenix Police Department's killing of community members and targeting of Black Lives Matter protesters. We are here today with Black Lives Matter Phoenix Metro, Mass Liberation Arizona, Poder in Action, the People's Law Firm, and Ibarra Maldonado Law Group submitting nine citizen petitions demanding you all enact resolution to actually hold Phoenix Police and the Maricopa County Attorney's Office accountable for their horrid, despicable anti-Black actions that I promise you, all of you, your children and grandchildren will be embarrassed at the actions you have not taken here. We are calling for a full independent investigation and a dismissal of all charges that are still outstanding with prejudice. We demand that you do your job and defend the community. To defend the community, you have to defund Phoenix police. Get used to hearing that, get used to saying that. We can send you notes if you need them. Chief Jerry and Ed do need to be terminated and we want reparations for all of the victims and there are many of Phoenix Police Department's unconstitutional protest response. We want community safety. We want the police to stop killing people. It's really not that hard. We know that you don't care, but we're demanding you do and we will keep showing up until our demands are heard. Thank you, I yield my time. Thank you, Rebecca is not online, so we will go to um, Hannah Heyman. I am here in support of the nine citizens petitions. I'm going to read them off again because we do not trust you. You need to do your jobs and follow up on all of these. Number one, enact a resolution calling on the Maricopa County Attorney's Office to drop all remaining charges against protesters arrested between May 28th, 2020 and November 1st, 2020 because these arrests were the result of the unethical and illegal conduct of Phoenix police officers. Two, launch an ethics investigation independent of the Phoenix Police Department and the Maricopa County Attorney's Office into the policies and practices of the tactical response unit and corresponding failure of leadership by Chief Jerry Williams of Phoenix Police Command Staff. Three, disband the tactical response unit. Four, terminate Jerry Williams, chokehold Jerry Williams. Five, terminate city manager Ed Zerker. Six, create a reparations fund for all individuals directly impacted by the Phoenix Police Department's use of excessive force at protests. Seven, create a reparations fund for all individuals directly impacted by the Phoenix Police Department's practice of politically and falsely prosecuting protesters. Eight, establish guidelines to prevent officers from lying under oath against protesters exercising their First Amendment rights. Nine, immediately return all personal property to protesters illegally arrested by the Phoenix Police Department. You can do all of these things today, and I sincerely hope you do. History has shown us that you are all complicit in anti-Black white supremacist violence against the communities of Phoenix. You have repeatedly chosen to support white supremacy, and you must all hold yourselves accountable for your violence, for all of the racist policies you enact, for all of the white supremacist rhetoric that you yourselves have spewed or ignored from your colleagues, for ignoring the demands of Black leadership for years. We, the community, have chosen to follow the Black leaders of the city and holding you accountable for your actions. You too must choose to hold yourselves accountable. I support the nine demands of the citizens petition and if you have any shred of a soul left, you will too. The city is watching you today, Mayor and Council. 
choose accountability, or be swept away with the chaff. For our staff, do we have audio on Tina? One moment, Mayor, I will check. Hi, this is, I'm, I'm uh, driving, so I'm not sure if uh, there's too much background noise to go ahead and cut me. Um, I want to just uh, uh, just repeat what Hannah said, uh, that we're here supporting Black Lives Matter, uh, trying to get the police to be defunded, trying to make the city council and the mayor accountable. The police chief needs to go. It's just really embarrassing that we're just every week, every month, every year, it's the same over and over and over again. And what someone else said earlier was, accountability is not punishment. We're just asking you to all be grown ups and say, this is a problem and we're going to fix it. All of you have the power to fix it. All of you have, you know what you need to do. You know what has to be done. You know what the problem is. You have eyes, you have ears, you have brains. We shouldn't have to be here every week, week in, week out, demanding all of this. It should just be inherent in your humanity to make these things happen. Defend the community, defend black lives, defund the police. Vidi Hernandez will be our final speaker. Hi, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Okay, perfect, thank you. Pers uh, my name is Vidi Hernandez and I'm here. I filed a petition, citizen's petition with the city clerk uh, pursuant to chapter four, section 22 of the Phoenix City Charter. I, Vidi Hernandez, a citizen and resident of the city of Phoenix, hereby petition the city council to terminate city manager Ed Zerker. The city manager has allowed rampant violence and the violation of our constitutional rights, has consistently failed to hold this department accountable and Chief Williams accountable, has been sitting on numerous immediate recommendations that can be implemented, created through the ad hoc to reduce police violence and has failed to act, continues to give more protections to the police and to these cops through the police contract, which is negotiated with the right wing aligned police union, LINC, continues to negotiate these in secret without community input and continues to be tone deaf to what is happening in the city, um, is doing nothing to hold anyone accountable. Um, and so as many of our partners said, we are here with in support of all of these citizens petitions and want these to be heard in the next 14 days. Um, and also to be clear, right, that one of the the changes that the city manager has refused to do is to allow independent investigations through the police contract, um, which makes the police their only investigators, which is ridiculous. Um, and so he, we're not here, you know, just in support of, of a note, but or oversight, but it has to be oversight that allow, allows independent investigations. And otherwise, we'll continue with what we have, which is police investigating themselves lying and allowing themselves to um, excuse and protect their behavior. I yield my time. That concludes today's meeting. We are adjourned.